Hi. Stadium, the site. Thanks so much for joining us tonight here on Super Talk 800 KREI. Chad Speaker, and great to be joined by Tom Willenbrink. And Tom, we're going to see, I think, one of the best class teams in Class 4. Farmington just outside of the rankings right now, but they're only lost to a Class 6 power. Poplar Bluff comes to town, an improving ball club, but a team still that uh, not in the winning side of things. 1 and 4 on the year. Farmington 4 and 1 suffered that loss against McClure North last week, but uh, I think we're going to see a good ball game out of them this week. Good bounce back ball game and for Poplar Bluff they're going to measure their success by some of what they're able to do even if they can't win tonight. Don't want to of course forecast a win or a loss yet but th that's where the two programs stand right now. Well exa you're exactly right there and, and the thing with Poplar Bluff is that of course they come into this game with a one and four record and they're coming into Farmington's uh, uh, crib right here and you know, really, what do they have to lose? I mean, they, I mean, I mean, the big key for them is going to be coming out and showing that they can hang with Farmington early on. Now, on the flip side of the ball, Farmington last week uh, got a little bit of a uh, rough treatment by a Class 6 team, and uh, a very good Class 6 team, I should say, McClure North. And now they're coming back into a little bit more familiar territory back home and uh, facing a team that they're more familiar with. And uh, unfortunately for Popper Bluff, uh, they might suffer a bit of their wrath this week after uh, what happened last week. Third member of our team, Kathy Capias, back at the studio. We always appreciate her great work engineering and operating our games. We'd like to thank Colton Steakhouse. They uh, gave us some fuel for the broadcast tonight. We appreciate them. And a little grill, uh, a little Colton Steakhouse and Grill football throwdown. We threw down some Coltons before we came out here. And where else can you get uh, steak? Peanut lovers, go to town, throw it down, not have to clean up the mess. So thanks to Coltons. And uh, also uh, thanks to uh, Jack Hand of Coltons for taking care of our sports crew tonight. We, the captains meeting at midfield, and uh, we will return with more of your pregame show and uh, here just a, a few moments from uh, Coach Todd Vaughn right after this 30-second pause right here on KREI and our friends in Poplar Bluff as well, KLID. If you're looking for those hard-to-find craft items, then look no further than Red Rooster Crafts and Supplies in Farmington. They offer what the big chain stores don't. In fact, if you don't find what you're looking for, Tracy will be glad to order it. Plus, Red Rooster Crafts offers custom picture framing and lots of new home decor, including nautical, western, Americana, and rooster-themed items. Check out the new line of cookie cutters and home decor outdoor flags. That's Red Rooster Crafts behind the post office in Farmington. be joined by Coach Todd Mom before our game now. And, and Coach uh, Poplar Bluff, uh, I, you won't say a new program, but, but Coach is back for his first year, and, and so a lot, probably a lot of the things they do new for the team. You played them in the Jamboree, and, and have, you, have you seen them, I mean, come away in your scouting for this game as compared to what you saw in the Jamboree? Yeah, I think so. You know, they're obviously way more confident and familiar with what they're doing, and, and uh, I think they, you know, we because we played – New Madrid in week two, and New Madrid played Bluff in week one. We kind of had that film too, and I think uh, they've progressed throughout the throughout the season so far, and they've improved. And you can tell that they have a plan, they have an idea of what they want to do. And um, if they, you know, come out and eliminate, eliminate the mistakes, they'd be really good. They, they make some mistakes, but they do execute pretty well, though. Yeah, following your first loss, was it kind of business as usual at practice? Did, did you see the guys crank it up in intensity? What was there a difference? How did the week go? You know, I'll be honest with you. It, it, it was another week. Yeah. Yeah, our kids were focused. They came out. We had, a, we had a good film session on Sunday, and we evaluated ourselves. And, and I had a great practice on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and finished up yesterday with a good one. So, uh, it's you know, it's kind of, I guess, business as usual. Our kids are excited that uh, we, you know, not that the first five games didn't matter, but this is really the first game that matters. We're playing conference play tonight, and it's a good way to, to hopefully we'll get started in conference in the 1-0. Uh, Coach, uh, do, uh, to me, obviously you comb through the film so you can see, and you even told me you could see, but it's hard for a guy like me to notice weaknesses when you're just drilling people. What were some of the weaknesses maybe that you addressed that you were able to maybe discover last game? 
Well, I mean, you have to score when you're in the red zone. I don't care who you're playing. You know, if you're playing a nine-ranked team in class six or not, you've got to, you've got to score when you're in, especially on the one-yard line. And then you can't turn the ball over, and uh, and you can't give up uh, big plays and uh, special teams, and definitely not touchdowns. But then defensively, we had some mistakes. You know, we had some guys not play assignments, and and then you know we just got physically beat at times. Which hey. I'll take that. I'll and that's Todd Vaughn and his thoughts before our game. The toss was won by Poplar Bluff. They had chosen to defer, and so it will be Farmington receiving the kickoff. Farmington and their home blacks with the gold numbers and letters, and Poplar Bluff and the road whites with the burgundy helmets, letters, and uh, numbers are our opening kickoff brought to us by Bill Bass Insurance, your American family insurance agent in Park Hills, committed to making the big play for its customers. Kicking it off will be Matt Riggins. He'll do it right to left as Tom and I look at and describe the action to you. Standing back for Farmington to receive the kickoff is Kyle Hartrip and Connor DeVault. The kick is high. It is deep. DeVault takes it at his own seven-yard line. Far side return. Gets the block. He's to the 20. Cuts to the outside 30. Far sideline 40. Looking for midfield and drilled out of bounds. Nice hit by Boppler Bluff. They'll hit you. Darius Sales comes up and pushes uh, Connor DeVault out with a nice stick right there. Starting lineups brought to us by Midwest Convenient Care. And starting for Farmington will be Brendan Amsden, the center. Ethan Hennis, Kyle Van Ness are the guards. Roper Garrett, Brian Capias are the tackles. Farmington starts its first drive at its own 48-yard line. And we're here looking for the first play from scrimmage. Evan Dunavant, a starting wide receiver off to the right in the slot. Alex Sebastian off of the left, uh, or the uh, right split end. And then over to the left side, it's Kyle Hartrup and Dougie Warren. Quarterback is Chase Busenbark. He missed the last half of last game against McClure North with an injured ankle. And he was a little ginger on it on Monday, but then practiced the rest of the week. And Connor DeVault will be the starting running back for this Farmington ball club. Busenbark has terrific numbers this year. Not so much last game. And we'll go through that more as we move along. A timeout before the very first play from scrimmage by Farmington. Well, let's take a minute and we'll be back with your first play from scrimmage on the other side of this one minute pause on Super Talk 800 KREI Farmington and also our friends in Poplar Bluff KLID. by Kathy Capias. Appreciate her work uh, tonight and every Friday night. Chase Busenbark, the quarterback. He's back in the shotgun. Quick pitch. Left side. Connor DeVault looking for the corner and turns on the motor then spun out of bounds along that far sideline. Man taking him out. Austin Goodrich getting that start at safety with the injured Nick Patello. Broke a collarbone and looks like he's done for the year. But a nine-yard gain by DeVault and Tom immediately we see that good speed of Connor DeVault. Good speed and good blocking as well. They gave him a big avenue to run and uh, he just turned a corner and uh, did a lot of the work himself. Midwest Convenient Care will bring us a starting defensive lineup for this Poplar Bluff Ball Club coming up in just a moment. So to the outside, Austin Goodrich made a nice tackle. Here's uh, Luke Lonnerette making the tackle on the inside, and it's a one-yard loss for Connor DeVault right there. So some toughness by this defense shown on the second play. The nose guard, T.J. Williams, he's 325 pounds. Good, good yeah. luck moving this guy. Jacob Sliger, Sean Sisney are the tackles. Darius Sales, Jake Lonnerette on the outside are the ends. Linebackers, Cody Fromm and Lorraine. Lorenzo Daly. Third and two for Farmington. Busenbar gets the snap. Quick pitch right side. DeVault ducks behind a blocker, and he's stopped. Nice work by this defense. A couple of impressive plays in a row. And that's a nice job getting there by Jacob Sliger. Six foot, 225, and just a sophomore as DeVault is stoned on that one. No gain. And quickly, Farmington right back to the line. Looks like they want to go for it. It's a fourth and two. So a quick roll of the dice here early on. Jake Pulliam, Kimbrell Miller, the corners, Brian Hicks, and Austin Goodrich are the safeties for this Poplar Bluff team. And a pass is complete across the sticks. Doug Warren ran a curl route five yards down the field. And Chase Busenbark hitting right between the eight and the eight. 
and Farmington faces its first test of the game, a fourth down near midfield, and they passed it with flying colors. Yes, the first pass of the game uh, goes for a first down, and, and of course, on fourth down, always good to get that first down, especially when you're so close, and uh, just a good pass and catch. Ten minutes, 37 seconds, and counting down in this first quarter, nothing, nothing game. Farmington hosting Poplar Bluff tonight. Busenbark throws it on a curl route, and a terrific catch by Alex Sebastian right there. Sebastian took it right away from the cornerback. That was Kimbrell Miller right there with him. Miller read the route well, and in fact, Busenbark threw it closer to Miller yes. than he did Sebastian, and Alex made a great catch. Yes, it was, and Alec, uh, having the awareness to see that that ball was heading right towards the cornerback, coming right back and grab, uh, grabbing that ball, and now we got second down in, in about two. All right, so Duvall, the lone running back here, he'll run a flare route off to the left side, and they'll throw it on that bubble screen over to Doug Warren. Warren turns on the motor. He's crossing the 20 down to the 15 and shoved out at the 13-yard line, and it is a gain of 18 yards, but there's a flag on the play. Yeah, flag on the play, and it looks like it's uh, near the line of scrimmage. That's usually in the vicinity of holding. We'll see what they call here. Sometimes they call it that holding box, and there's yep. why. Yep, there you go right there. And, uh, and of course, you know, uh, Warren, uh, you know, despite the, despite the play being called back, uh, he also turned on the guns and uh, made a nice play himself. But sometimes whenever you see them, you know, getting all that space to run and a big game like that, sometimes there is a little holding there, so... Well, yeah, I think you're really going to enjoy watching Doug Warren play, Tom. 6'4", 200 pounds, mm -hmm. runs, has hands, can leap. Really a, a nice athlete for Farmington. Yeah, he is. And, uh, and also, Busenbark looking pretty sharp here early on as well. Sure is. Quad receivers to the right side. Man on the island over to the left, it's Doug Warren. It's a second and seven for Farmington, as that was a spot foul on the hold. Snap back to Busenbark. Looks to Warren. Now tucks it and goes. Boy, that ankle looks pretty good right now. Yeah. And Busenbark picks up 11 yards. Busenbark <laughs> said it was an old injury. He had an ankle injury and had a bone kind of chip off when he was young. And he said it was something where he felt like it was a reoccurrence of that when he got hit, and Monday he was limping a little bit, Tuesday a little bit better, and and, and Coach Vaughn said by the end of the week, looked like Chase again. Yeah, and he had good presence of mind there to take that scramble, and he's got some wheels himself. I mean, he's, he's not afraid to run the ball either, and as you said, I didn't see the injury. First and 10, and they've got it at the 24-yard line of Poplar Bluff, and the pass complete off to that left side by Hartrip. That's just a curl route. I'll tell you what we're learning here early on is Darius Sales delivers a good hit. This is a physical Poplar Bluff ball club. Yes, it is, and uh, you got to give credit to uh, Coach Mark Barus for uh, instilling a little bit of that confidence that Poplar Bluff's been lacking the past couple years. We talked to him before the game, and uh, it seems like that he's got this program on track. You bet. Alex Sebastian wide to the right side, and they, are, they have three wide receivers to the left side. Jet sweep as DeVault gets it on the handoff. Connor puts the head down, slams over a man, and he pushes forward for a seven-yard gain. First time we've seen that jet sweep. Yes, and uh, that, is a big, that is a big part of the Farmington offense. I know that. And, uh, and uh, what we're seeing on a con counter to ball is just good vision. I mean, it seems like that he's, he's not content to just to take what he's given. He'll look for that hole, and uh, he'll take it. First and goal just inside of the 10-yard line. So won't be able to get a first down before they get a touchdown. DeVault, the keeper this time, the mesh point, had a little stoppage right there. And then Rosenbach leaves it in his belly, and it's a gain of three yards for Farmington. And he was brought down by that big nose tackle, T.J. Williams, the uh, six foot four, three hundred twenty-five pound junior. And uh, and the ball looks like he he maybe if it was a smaller guy, he might have been able to spin out of it. But uh, Williams with a good wrap-up tackle, and now we got second down. Yeah, that guy, that T.J. I'll swallow you whole. Yeah. Here's a oh, they marked it back just a little bit. So it's a second and goal from the eight. So it looked like they initially marked it as a three-yard gain. Now a two-yard gain, and they bluff it this time to the vault. It's a keeper by Busenbart. Cuts back at the five, pushes forward to the four. And there's a gain of four yards by Chase Busenbart. Chase with a couple of carries in this one and 15 yards rushing. And at the 8-15 mark of this first frame, Farmington looking at a third and goal from the four-yard line of Poplar Bluff. Got a nine-play drive so far. Started on their own 48. And uh, Farmington moving the ball fairly efficiently here to start off the game. Two wide receivers to each side. And the man on the far left side, Doug Warren, they like to throw it up for him in the end zone. Busenbart keeps it. Stumbles forward to the five-yard line. He is shut down by Jake Waterette. Jake, 5'9", 180 pounds, but this kid plays defensive end, and he's already racked up 43 tackles coming into this game. And he's got a very high motor out there, too. Uh, he uh, initially missed the tackle, but he just kept with it and kept with it, and he took Busenbark down. And now we're going to see the field goal game team come out here, and we were told uh, before the game that Logan Bradley's been a little ill, and he might not be doing a lot of kicking, but here he is. Here he is, 21 
yard field goal try by Bradley. Swings the right leg, and Farmington has the lead. 3-0, first good field goal for Bradley on the season in his second field goal try. 7-24, remaining in the first frame. Farmington on top, 3-0. And we've got your kickoff coming up next right here on Super Talk 800 KREI and KLID Poplar Bluff. Concrete in Farmington takes a lot of pride in the work they do. They offer the quality work you deserve with reasonable pricing. They are locally owned with over 18 years of experience. They service Farmington and all the surrounding areas. Lee Concrete are the flat work specialist and can handle all your concrete needs from driveways to sidewalks. Call Tony Lee at Lee Concrete in Farmington at 760-9488. That's Lee Concrete, top quality work at reasonable prices. Brian Hicks, the deep man for this Poplar Bluff return team. And there's Logan Bradley. He powers this thing deep and is taken by Miller at his own three-yard line. Miller along that far sideline across the 20 to the 25, driven out right there at the 30. And Tom, a good drive for Farmington in terms of yardage, but, you know, tip your cap to Poplar Bluff. They step in at the end. Well, exactly. They uh, got to stop when it counted right there in the red zone. And, of course, we talked to Todd Vaughn before the game. He talked about how getting those points in the red zone are so critical. And, and a touchdown would have been nice, but they did get the field goal. And it's good to see that Logan Bradley's doing okay uh, as that drive went 10 plays uh, for a total of 44 yards. And ended up with that 21-yard field yes. goal by Logan Bradley. All right, Poplar Bluff with its chance at the offensive end. They're led out by Michael Griggs as starting lineups brought to us by Midwest Convenient Care. Griggs will stand behind Alex Green as center, Eduardo Godinez, and Zach Boyer are the guards. Nick Michael and Trent Wellborn, the tackles. Quentin Michael is actually Nick's twin. He'll play the tight end spot. Austin Goodrich is a split end. Running backs, Austin Barus. Yep. Recognize the name. He is the coach's kid. Lorenzo <laughs> Daly, Cornelius Timothy will be in the backfield as well. So Michael Griggs marks it out. He has two wide receivers to the right side, one to the left. Griggs back in the gun. Fires this one up top. Goodrich running underneath of it. Jumps high and holds it in. What a catch by Goodrich. Wow, what a play. And a 30-yard gain on the first play for scrimmage from Poplar Bluff. And that was just size, size, size right there for Popper Bluff. Very first play of the game, going deep on a bomb. And that was a good jump and catch by Austin Gersh, a 6'3", 185-pound senior. And now Popper Bluff is in Farmington territory. My Goodrich, he could have slam dunked that thing he was so high. I know. What a play. Darren Yunt, the wide receiver to the left side. It's keeper by Michael Griggs, the quarterback. He gets into the middle of the whole mess, cuts back, and then spun and driven down. That's Jared Sumter finishing him off right there. Gain of a yard by Michael Griggs. The starters for Farmington on the defensive side, Kyle Van Ness is the nose guard. Ethan Hennis, Jared Sumter are the tackles in the ends. They'll line up his ends and tackles. They'll slip around a little bit. Roper Garrett's in the middle of the linebacking core. He's flanked by Ryder Garrett, his brother, and Brian Capias. Our stud position, manned by Connor DeVault, Logan Bradley, the night position. They're kind of outside linebacker, cornerback hybrids. Then it's Chase Busenbark, Kyle Hartrip for the corners, and Kyle Warren is the safety. A second and nine option play. Left side, Griggs pitches it out, and it's cut back. Driven out of bounds. And the running back there, Cornelius Timothy. Pretty good mesh point there by Michael Griggs, though. I thought he made a nice decision right there. Took it right in the teeth of that defense and then pitched it for a four-yard gain by Timothy. Oh, absolutely. And uh, and also a good job by the Farmington defense as well to stay with that option and uh, not give uh, the running back too much room to, uh, room to run. Public Bluffs only run a few plays, Tom, but already they're showing great variety with this offense. Yeah, they have. And i uh, got to give credit to... Uh, to, to Coach Perez for, uh, for for the creative offense. Timothy, a lone set back. They'll fake it to him. Griggs going to run the keeper. Griggs is down to the 30, closing in on the 25, thrown out of bounds by Roper Garrett. But he's showing some good quickness there. And a gain of nine yards, Michael Griggs. Yeah, Michael Griggs has come out to play tonight. Also, too, for Farmington, that's uh, at least the second or third time we've called Ryder Garrett's name just on this drive alone. He's been uh, staying with them and, uh, and uh, trying to keep this offense from uh, doing too much damage. But Popper Bluff... 
They're putting the pedal to the metal here early on. They really are. It's an offense uh, gaining only a modest 220 yards per game, scoring less than 17 per game, but it looks sharp here so far. And that's the handoff to Lorenzo Daly. Daly slides through his guards that time in the middle of this offensive front, opening up a little seam for him right there before he's shut down after a pair. Yeah, and it was a good job at the front and linebackers and secondary to get in there and close that hole, and it was a very wide hole that the Popper Bluff offensive line created for him. He had, you could have driven a boat through that hole that he had, and uh, Farmington doing a good job at, uh, with the point of attack there to stop him from going any further. 5-20 remaining in the first frame, 3-0, Farmington on top, knocked in a 21-yard field goal to take that lead. And now here's Lorenzo Daly once again. Bubble. He has hit once and twice before he got to the line. Then, as he danced past the line, he put it on the ground. And Farmington's got it on the turnover. Some four turnovers by Farmington last week against McClure North. That's hard to get it done against most teams, especially a very good one like McClure North. And Farmington would like to win that turnover battle here tonight. And so far, well, plus one for Farmington. Yes, and that is a good start for Farmington, uh, winning that turnover battle. And... Uh, and I didn't see who came up with that ball. It could have been a few players, but uh, uh, Farmington uh, doing a good job to get the ball back here and averting uh, what could have been uh, some popper bluff points. Yeah, you're right. So Chase Busenbark leads him out. He's got Connor DeVault beside him, three wides to the right side, one man off to the left. They love to isolate Doug Warren one-on-one -on -one and then throw it up top for the rangy 6-4 wide out. So Busenbark looks over to the sideline, running that check-with-me offense from the spread, puts his hands down, steps it, snaps it, and flips it out to Warren. Doug, out to the 25 and a gain of three. Yeah, they like to uh, have Warren kind of create his own magic out there with those little short passes and screens, and that time didn't work out too well for him, but uh, a lot of times, more than not, Warren will use his size and his speed to his advantage to, uh, to break those tackles. Good motor that time by Jacob Slager to get out and help on that tackle of the split end from the tackle position. Busenbark calls it out again, once again goes to Warren. Well, you can dink and dunk your way down the field. You sure can, and that time it's a gain of nine. Hey, what works, works, and, you know, if it doesn't work the first time, try it again, I guess, and uh, and Warren, he's just a special kind of athlete to where he can make his own magic out there, and, and now we already have a first down here, first and ten, ball at the Farmington 34. You know what Poplar Duff Bluff has done a pretty nice job with, though, over the first drive and a half here, not allowing that big play. Absolutely. I, I, we haven't seen that from Farmington yet so far. It looked like a couple times, you know, Connor or Warren could have uh, made some magic going, but uh, but Popper Bluff uh, standing up to the attack. Hand off to Connor DeVault this time. DeVault gets through the middle. He's got one man. Can't man. slip past the final one. It's a gain of 23 yards for Connor DeVault. Oh, Connor looked like he was off to the races there, and it was just, it wasn't even a man. It was just an arm getting in his way to kind of wrestle him back a little bit for the rest of the defense to catch up, but Connor DeVault, he's, he's, he's got his motor going tonight. There's the big play we were talking about. Yes, huh? yes, there we go. Could have even been a bigger play, but Popper Bluff stopping him. First and ten, Farmington and Poplar Bluff territory now at the 44-yard line of the Mules. DeVault gets again, and this time DeVault runs into a whole mass of humanity. That's Jacob Slyger there to help finish him off. And the Darius Sales in on that one. Also, T.J. Williams, a big guy that you brought up early. No gain for Connor. Yeah, Slager in there on a few tackles. A six foot, 225 pound sophomore defensive tackle, and uh, trying the same play again. And uh, that time, Popper Bluff is up to the task. 3:50 remaining in the first frame, and Farmington leads three nothing. Busenbark looks deep for Kyle Hartrup, and the pass is broken up by Austin Goodrich. I'm impressed with this young guy as an athlete. He showed us his that great athleticism in catching a pass on the offensive end, and he showed his closing speed right there to break that one up. Absolutely, and uh, as you mentioned, uh, Hartrup has some speed and. Looks like he might have had a step or two on him, but uh, uh, good job by the defensive back, as you mentioned, to uh, close that gap. And uh, and uh, now we're seeing third down and ten here, and you got to think this is definitely a passing situation. The good news for Farmington there, Tom, nobody even close to Busenbark. The line held firm. Yes, and the line has held pretty firm so far this game. Twins to each side. DeVault be the man beside Busenbark. Third and ten. Farmington works at it from the Poplar Bluff 44. 344 remaining in the first quarter, and the Knights leading it three to nothing. Busenbark, back to pass. The pocket starting to collapse. Flips it over the middle, and it was Warren that was wide open. Nobody within 10 yards of him, but the pass sails over, and Chase slaps his hands together at midfield. He knew he had his man, and he missed him. Yeah, that was just mis I think that was a miscommunication right there. It looked like Warren broke off his uh, route, and it kind of started you know, going back on a curl, and uh, obviously there was just something there that wasn't really clicking, and now we're going to see uh, the Farmington punt team come out, and Logan Bradley back to punt. So Logan Bradley will come on to punt. We saw him knock through the field goal earlier in this game. And he'll punt it away to Daly. Snap is back. Nice one. 
And this thing goes up the silo, turns over, and comes down. A spiral. And Daly's driven down inside his own 20-yard line. Boy, there's Logan Bradley. And, I mean, that's what a college punter looks like right there, Tom. Oh, absolutely. And uh, he has just been, he, he's, he's been, you know, a great kicker as well, too, all season long. He's got a big foot. And, 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 and as Bob Vaughn mentioned to us before the game, he's been playing, uh, he's playing with an illness right now. And, he, and he's still out there gutting it out. And uh, you got to give him a lot of credit for fighting through whatever is ailing him. Talk to Coach about possibility of Bradley maybe kicking at the college level. And he said, you know what? I think he's a good enough baseball player. I think he's probably going to play baseball. Hmm. So good for him. Always nice to have options. You bet it is. And twins to the right side. And now they'll go off to the right. A timing route. And then that one intended for Goodrich. And they hit Pater earlier with that play. But at that time, Griggs overthrows him to the far sideline. 3 nothing Farmington. And Farmington, Tom, a ball club, averaging 41.6 points a game. And we've got less than three and a half to go in the first quarter, and the Mules have held them out of the end zone so far. Yeah, they have, and uh, you got to give them a lot of credit. As I mentioned, you know, uh, one of the keys for Popper Bluff coming into this game was trying to match up with Farmington and show that they can belong. And so far, it looks like they definitely belong out there on the field. Trent Udaley, the wide receiver off to the left side. Darren Yunt is in, the, in there as well. Quarterback runs the keeper. Griggs going far sideline and runs away from Connor DeVault and out of bounds. Again, of six yards for Michael Griggs. Yeah, Griggs is a lot like a booze and bark in the fact that he'll also take the ball down and run with it himself, and he's he's shown some ability to uh, to, to just you know make a good decision when it comes to throwing or passing. He'll just go ahead and take off, and uh, he's he's proven to be successful tonight. Senior, six foot, one sixty five, three eighteen remaining in our first frame, and a three nothing ball game is Farmington on top. Twenty one yard field goal from Logan Bradley. The difference in this one, third and four. Hopper Bluff football. They'll deploy three wide receivers off to the left. They'll use that tight end as well. Quinton Michael's a good one. And now a handoff right up the middle, and Lorenzo Daly danced through one tackle. Now two, breaks to the 40, cuts back to the 45, finally ridden down by Ryder Garrett. But not before he gains 23 yards and a flag at the end of the play. Yeah, a flag at the end of the play. Might have been a late hit there. I'm not sure. We'll see. But Daly... You might want to check to make sure he wasn't dipped in grease before that run because he was slippery <laughs> out there. I mean, he broke at least three or four tackles out there, and that's just uh, that's just a slippery running there by Daly. And uh, we see the penalty goes uh, against Farmington for a face mask. Face mask on Farmington, so they'll walk off five more yards. They didn't call the personal foul variety against the Knights. So we'd yeah. like to thank a few sponsors as we move along. Captain D's of Farmington, ProCare Automotive and Bonds Air, Benning Ford in Fredericktown, Earth Mother Health Foods, and Belgrade State Bank and Deloge, Farmington, Potosi, and Belgrade. Here come the mules. These mules aren't so slow. No, they aren't. Twins to the left side, one wide to the right side. Michael Griggs back to pass. Flips it down the left side of the field. A long pass, and this one is jumped and cuts. What a grab. Poplar Bluff has done it again, and that's Brian Hicks going high for the grab all the way down to the 20-yard line. A gain of 40 yards on the play. The 5'10", 165-pound senior coming down with that grab, his first catch of the game. And we saw uh, on, on that there, it looks like that once the ball is thrown up in the air, he kind of turned on an extra gear or two there and actually earns a little bit of separation from the corner. And uh, good job to haul that one in by Popper Bluff. And again, Popper Bluff now knocking on Farmington's door. Griggs fumbles the snap and then dives down to cover it up. A flag on the play as well, but Popper Bluff, Tom, has thrown three passes, mm-hmm. one in completion. They've got a 30-yard and a 40-yard gain. Hey, that's uh, and if you're coach, uh, and if you're uh, uh, head coach of Popper Bluff, I mean, you got to be happy with with the way that you're seeing your offense work tonight. I mean, I mean, they've shown uh, the ability to run the ball as well as throw the ball as well, and looks like this is going to be a false start here on Popper Bluff and. And it's almost kind of ironic that there was a little bit of a fumble there because this was the exact same point in, of the field that Popper Bluff had to fumble the first drive. Got that right, Tom. A big play and then a fumble. And that's what Farmington is looking to do right now is toughen up that defense or maybe cause a turnover. But Popper Bluff looking good as Lorenzo Daly grabs it and goes over the left guard. Nothing for him there this time. That'll be no gain on the play. And coming off the bottom of the pile, that's Roper Garrett. 6'2", 220 pounds, and this kid hands out headaches left and right. Oh, absolutely. He's been in there on a few tackles tonight, and uh, and now Popper Bluff, uh, now second and 15 here, and this will be the second time they've come close to the Farmington offense. And if you're and and, and if you're a Popper Bluff fan, you definitely want to see them getting some points here. With they got these great opportunities here in the red zone. They don't feel great about their kicking game, so they would rather well anybody would rather go for six, but <laughs> well they we won't they won't stretch the field with their kicker a whole lot. <laughs> Here's Lorenzo Timothy. This guy's got a motor to the 10, to the 5, diving for the pylon. Can't get there, but he's down to the 2. 
and it's a gain of 24 yards. Cornelius Timothy. And Roper Garrett there on the tackle. Again, good hustle by Garrett to get all the way back there because it looks like that he was off to the races for sure. And I think that's the first time we call Timothy's uh, name tonight. And uh, he makes his uh, first touch count. Cornelius Timothy. Boy, he showed some speed right there. They're going to keep him in. They said, well done, young man. Why don't you try it again? So Timothy's going to wind up behind Griggs. Griggs is going to come under center right here. First and goal for the two. Griggs just kind of huddles down beneath that line. Push, push, push. Trying to power for the end zone. The officials all come in. All the Poplar Bluff signal players signaling touchdown, but the official says, nope, you're going to have to try it again. Yeah, it looks like he tried to have, he had some help back there. People, uh, his own teammates trying to push him into that end zone and, uh, and uh, Farmington winning the war of attrition. And we talked before the game uh, about the size difference between Farmington and Popper Bluff, and they're both pretty evenly matched up as far as uh, Farmington's defensive line and Popper Bluff's offensive line. Pretty even a 26 uh, per man pound advantage, defensive or offensive line for Poplar Bluff. So they've got a little advantage there. Let's see what Griggs is going to do. Is he going to try to push it in again? Nope, he hands it off, this time to Daly. And Daly is slammed down to the ground. That's a loss of a yard that time as the Farmington defense defense. Ethan Hennis with a nice tackle that a 5'6", 180-pound junior coming in there, breaking through that offensive line of Popper Bluff to, to drag him down by the knees. And that's just a textbook tackle right there. You go for the legs. Cornelius Timothy checking back in. He was the running back that had the big play earlier. Brian Hicks, he caught that ball. That was a nice play down that left side. And the quarterback going to go back to the gun once again, Michael Griggs. Griggs cuts back to the middle of the field, hit once, hit twice, and taken down in the backfield. Wrapped up right there by Alex Sebastian. Yeah, Alex Sebastian coming out there to help out on defense and ended up losing a few yards there. So now we got fourth down and about six. Popper Bluff, uh, they have a decision to make here. Do they trust the kicking game? Well, they had it. They didn't just have it to the one, Tom. They had the nose of the football right on the goal line, yeah. and now they're facing a fourth and goal from the five. 22 seconds remaining in this first quarter and 12 seconds remaining on the play clock. So they'll either have to take a timeout or run a play before the end of this first quarter. Three to nothing, Farmington leads. And it looks like Bruce here is going to try to take a timeout here to try to figure out exactly what they do want to do here. So uh, Farmington, a big stand here coming up possibly. Big play coming up. We'll tell you about it on the other side of this 30-second pause. Thanks so much for joining us for Farmington and Poplar Bluff football tonight on KREI and KLID. This is Mary Lee, owner of Earth Mother Health Foods. Did you know we're the largest, most complete health food store in southeast Missouri? You know, if you're feeling tired, maybe you need to be on a good vitamin. We invite you to come into Earth Mother and get a free sample of a vitamin that you can feel the same day you take it. Now, stop by Earth Mother Health Foods. We have 3,500 square feet of products to meet your health care needs. That's at Earth Mother Health Foods, 220 East Harrison in downtown Farmington, 573-756-7852. Eight seconds remaining in this first quarter, and Poplar Bluff is standing up to these Farmington Knights. Last year, it was a 70-7 to blistering by Farmington, but Poplar Bluff, an improved ball club, and it looks like they've taken a nice step forward from last week to this week even as well. Well, this is not your older brother's Poplar Bluff team. This is a new Poplar Bluff that we're seeing here tonight, and uh, and they're knocking down there on the goal line, and, uh, and, uh, unfor and, and unfortunately for them, they're at the five now. They started at the half-yard line, and, um, and they didn't have like a... I guess they couldn't uh, throw out T.J. Williams. It's a fourth there, and but. five, and the quarterback keeps it, bluffs a pass, and then sacked in the backfield by Roper Garrett. The big man with the first big hit of the game. Your crown collision, collision of the game. Yeah, Roper Garrett, he has been all over out there tonight. I mean, that's, that's at least his third or fourth tackle here just on this drive alone, causing the turnover on downs and Farmington, avoiding disaster. A, a huge play by Roper Garrett right there. That's... But he's kind of made a living at huge defensive plays, and he comes up big for Farmington right there. you got to tip your cap to the coverage of the Knights as well because Griggs tried to pass that early, nowhere to go, and was forced to scramble. So Farmington football, and they've got it at their own 10-yard line, first and 10. Chase Busenbark, the quarterback, coming back out for this series. Busenbark back in the gun, flips it over to the left side, and this one's picked off. The route is jumped by Austin Goodrich. 
Austin Goodrich. I beg your pardon, it wasn't Goodrich, it was Kimbrell Miller. I beg your pardon. Kimbrell Miller has the interception, and Tom, that's the third time we've seen a near interception, and that time it happened. Yes, it was, and, and we, we've called Goodrich's name a lot tonight, you know, in that category, but, but this time Miller coming up here with a big interception, and I do mean big because this gives Popper Buff some very rosy field position on the Farmington, they're going to call it the 14-yard line. And it was on the final play of the first quarter. So we'll be back with your second frame as Farmington trying to hold on to a 3 nothing lead against Poplar Bluff. We'll tell you more in a minute. It's Sam Sism Ford Lincoln model year and close out. Right now you can get 2011 Ford Fiestas, Focus, Fusion, Mustang, and Taurus at 2011 closeout prices. Plus Sam Sism has SUVs and crossovers too, like Ford Escape, Explorer, and Edge. When you think Ford, think Sam Sism Ford Lincoln, the trusted name for Ford and Lincoln for nearly 75 years. That's Sam Sism Ford Lincoln off Highway 67 between Park Hills and Farmington. Captain D's in Farmington announces their dozen butterfly shrimp meal with two sides and two hush puppies for $5.99. Plus, you'll get your choice of four different sauces, like Southwest Chipotle, Brown Sugar Bourbon, Hickory Barbecue, or Orange Glaze Sweet Chili. What are you waiting for? Get to Captain D's across from the Family Center on Highway 221 in Farmington. For food you just gotta have, that's Captain D's, Highway 221 in Farmington. Michael Griggs puts three wide receivers off to the left side, then runs the bluff on the jet sweep to the left and keeps it himself. That just forward for a four-yard gain, and Papa Bluff knock on Farmington's door yet again. Yes, yeah, starting on the uh, Farmington 19-yard line off the interception. Farmington getting the ball right back on the turnover on downs. A nice tackle by Rupert Garrett, but the first play, the interception, as uh, the Popper Bluff secondary is looking really good tonight. Chase Busenbart, too. He's got some good numbers this year. Chase has passed for nine touchdowns, and that was only his third interception of the year. So you have to earn it against Chase as Griggs keeps it again, fakes the handoff, and that's right. Is that Garrett Roper once again bringing I, him I, down? or was, Actually, no. That, was that is Logan Bradley. Was Logan, Logan Bradley coming in there. Yes, the, uh, mm -hmm. the ill man on defense coming through and, uh, and uh, stopping Griggs on the play, but not before Griggs ended up uh, getting right back to about the line of scrimmage, maybe a gain of a half yard. So another third in, in uh, I, I guess you'd call it long. Third, long six, short seven. Take your pick. And the ball is resting on the 10-yard line of the Knights. Twin wide receivers off to the left. That's Hicks and Dowd. And one man is off to the right side. That's the dangerous Austin Goodrich. Cornelius Timothy, the lone running back. And Griggs fires this one to the end zone, diving up to try to grab it. A great defensive stop as Hicks jumped up to try to grab it. And the man on defense, was that our tackler, Logan Bradley, out that, there? That was Logan Bradley out there breaking up the pass on a on a fade route, trying to go for that back corner of the end zone, and uh, Logan Bradley just uh, all over that one and uh, did not give Hicks a chance to come down with it. So now, fourth down and ten, and looks like again we're going to see uh, we're going to see a fourth down try here by Popper Bluff. A great couple of downs by Logan Bradley, huh? Oh yes, yes, absolutely. Twins to the left side again, down on Hicks, and I'll tell you what, Griggs threw that thing perfectly, but yeah, Bradley just made a great play. So Griggs has it. He deploys four wide receivers in an out route near the end zone, but forcing himself to come back for the ball is Hicks. And as he stumbled to try to grab that ball, it's incomplete. And twice, Poplar Bluff now has given it back to Farmington on downs in the red zone. And what, what happened there with Hicks was that he knew that he was right there by the end zone. He knew he had a first down. He thought that maybe he could get into the end zone. He had all those things going on in his mind, but he forgot about catching the ball. Yeah, that was a tough play. That yeah, was. All right, Farmington's got it again. Backed up toward their own end zone. They have it at their own 10. And they start with a football at their own 10 for the second possession in a row. Last time they turned it over on an interception. This time this says let's keep it on the ground. And Connor DeVault tries to bang his way over that right tackle. But that's 325-pound avalanche thing. T.J. Williams coming down on him after a two-yard gain. And we've seen Farmington have some issues trying to run the ball up the middle. And I'm sure Williams is a big reason for that, the big 325-pound tackle. And he's lined up over the 5'8", 210-pound sophomore, Alex Green. And I tell you, Alex Green's probably going to need uh, some extra time in the ice bath tonight uh, dealing with him. They have Brendan Amsden, the center for Farmington. And they are outweighed by just a little bit. This is the pass complete to Evan Donovan. Donovan had it for no gain. And then when the defense tried to tackle him, Tom, and I, you see this happen all the time, they actually slammed him forward for a five-yard pickup. Yeah, you'll take the yards however you can get them, either by penalty or by just things like that. So Farmington moving the ball here, and it's 
not quite enough for a first down, and looks like they might be measuring here. Boy, he, they had him stopped right there. They, yeah, there were did. three tacklers on top of him, and then a man came from behind and actually shoved him forward. A popular golf guy assisting him on his uh, pickup right there. Well, you got to get the eighth for effort there at least, but... Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I'm sure Popper Bluff would have liked to have uh, brought him down there at first, those, that first contact. And Farmington looking for another inch or two right here. And let's thank Auto Spa and Deloge in Farmington. Midwest Convenient Care in Farmington of Terre. Hoods Discount Home Center in Farmington. Show me rent to own. Buckley Towing in Park Hills. American Family Insurance Bill Bass in Park Hills. Mineral Area College. And Jim Rothke Shelter Insurance in St. Genevieve. That'll be a third and very very short for the Knights. And there is one offense here in the uh, Parkland that can get that uh, one yard. It is Farmington. So Look forward to Tom joining us. Tom Lively, that is, at yeah. the half with our Auto Spa Car Wash Halftime Show. We'll have all the highlights and scores from around the area for us. And, of course, I want to thank Kathy Capias back at the studio for keeping us on the air. We do appreciate it. Connor DeVault, the running back. Chase Busenbark is the quarterback. Now, Poplar Bluff likes to run from the shotgun as well, but when they got in short yardage, they would actually come up under center. Farmington doesn't do that. They'll go exclusively from the gun, and Busenbark is back in the shotgun with just about an inch remaining on this third and very short. Hands it off to DeVault. Connor's got a first down and more. Connor struggling forward and finally pushes the pile 10 yards down the field. What a play by Connor DeVault. Yeah, what a play indeed. DeVault not satisfied just to get that one yard in a cloud of dust. He ended up getting about five yards before the first contact was made, and then we just saw him drive and drive and drive and drive and push that pile back for another five yards after that. So now Farmington moving the ball here. They got the ball on the 30-yard line. Connor, the leading rusher for this team on the year. The guy averages 66 yards per game. He's above that pace right now. Roll to the left side, and a nifty roll by Busenbark, who is very good throwing on the run as he completes this one to Doug Warren, nine yards down the field. And a good job by Doug Warren on his route there. Uh, just a simple uh, cut, cut in route here. He went out, and then he cut back in on a curl, and uh, Warren doing a good job uh, concentrating, bringing that ball in, and uh, not quite enough for a first down, about a yard and a half short, but Farmington moving the ball. Nine minutes and eight seconds remaining in the second quarter. We've got a 3 nothing game. It's a thriller here in Farmington tonight. The mesh point is to DeVault this time. Needed to and got to in the hole. The man that tried to stop him, Lorenzo Daly. He plays that linebacker spot. A little bit undersized at 5'9", 165. And DeVault just overpowered him for the first down. Absolutely. And DeVault, we've seen him tonight. He's not willing to go down on that first contact. And uh, we saw him again just drag, drag, drag the guy for another couple yards there. So DeVault with a high motor tonight. And uh, Farmington uh, got another first down. So the line of scrimmage moves out to the 42 for Farmington. They work it from their own side of the field. Booz and Bark back up in the gun. Barks it out. Now looks over to the sideline. We'll check with me over there. 848 and counting down in the second frame. Farmington has not reached the end zone yet. It's a 3 nothing lead. Farmington with that lead with its first field goal of the season by their kicker, Logan Bradley. Busenbark has all day to throw. Fires it over to the near sideline, and this one is out of bounds. An amazing leaping grab by Kyle Hartrup. He actually jumped out of bounds, tipped it with one hand, and pulled it in with one hand. An incredible catch that won't count. Well, what, what way to keep it in the play, at least. I mean, you want to, you know, keep the effort going. But we saw there again, Busenbark with a lot of time to throw, and he did have some pressure coming off the uh, far end by Lake Lauderette. And a good job coming back and chipping in with the block by Ethan Hennis, seeing that Busenbark's blind side was at risk. Second and ten now. Quick pitch, right side. DeVault has to cut back, and in the inside pursuit can't trap him either. Connor plows forward for an eight-yard pickup. That's just right decision-making. I think running backs, you love power, you love speed, you love cutback ability, but one of those factors that is hard to measure, but you see it on the field, is vision, Tom. Vision, absolutely, and Connor definitely has that. We've seen him a few times, you know, trying to take what he's presented, but then he'll just make lemon out of lemonade, or lemonade out of lemons, actually. <laughs> a roll to the left side. Busenbart keeps it. He's going to cut back to the right side. Got a little room. Midfield now to the 45. Cuts again to the 40. Busenbart dives to the 35-yard line. A gain of 15, and another guy that has a little vision there. That ankle was, looks pretty good. I was just going to say, what was it we were talking about? Vision right there. Busenbart going one way, cutting back to the other, seeing that he was going to go absolutely nowhere and creating his own magic out there. And uh, another big game by Busenbart. He can throw it and he can run it. You know, it might not have gone where it was originally designed. The hole wasn't there. But what the blockers did, even though they didn't open up the original hole, they kept 
blocking, and that gave Busenbach a chance. The line had vision, too. You gotcha. Well, it's uh, first and ten at the 35-yard line of Poplar Bluff. This is a design keeper this time by Chase. Chase breaks a couple of tackles, now lowers his shoulder on a man, runs him over, and he's got an 11-yard gain. 11-yard gain by Busenbach, and uh, coming off about a 15-yard gain beforehand, uh, Busenbach already making his uh, stamp on the game so far. And, and again, got to get credit to the offensive line for giving that hole to run through. You bet. 142 yards coming in for Chase, and he's got 41 in this one alone. Here's that diamond formation. It's a bunch formation with four wide receivers wide to the left side. The lone man on the right is Doug Warren. They love to throw to him when he's all by himself. They'll also like to throw to Kyle Hardtrup. He'll step back in this formation, but now they look for Warren. Now they look to the middle of the field. Benevin's wide open in the end zone. Touchdown! A 24-yard touchdown pass. Chase Busenbark to Evan Donovan. The fifth touchdown catch of the year by Evan Donovan and the tenth touchdown pass by Chase Busenbark, and the line gave him all night to deliver it. Absolutely. And we did see here, Busenbark looked to the right. He was looking for a war, but he was double covered. And, uh, and that allowed um, the guy for Farmington to get wide open, Evan Dunavin, and uh, again, pulling down the touchdown. Uh, coming into this game, uh, uh, just a couple of uh, catches so far, four touchdowns. So he, he has another one to his list. Yeah, he's, a, he's a touchdown maker. 10 nothing as the extra point sails up and through. And with 7.26 remaining in this first half. Farmington on top 10 zip over Poplar Bluff. We'll tell you more after this one minute pause on KREI and KLID. Lee Concrete in Farmington takes a lot of pride in the work they do. They offer the quality work you deserve with reasonable pricing. They are locally owned with over 18 years of experience. They service Farmington and all the surrounding areas. Lee Concrete are the flat work specialist and can handle all your concrete needs from driveways to sidewalks. Call Tony Lee at Lee Concrete in Farmington at 760-9488. That's Lee Concrete. Top quality work at reasonable prices. Hi, this is Steve Green with New Era Bank. If you're age 16 to 25, we have a checking account just for you called Generation Now Checking. This absolutely free checking account has all the bells and whistles. Checks, debit card, mobile, text and internet banking, and bill pay all for free. Plus, free ATM withdrawals anywhere in the United States. Again, if you're age 16 to 25, this is the right checking account for you. Generation Now Checking from New Era Bank. Subject to terms and conditions, member FDIC. Logan Bradley delivers the sky-high kick, and this one sails over everybody's head, including Brian Kicks, the deep man right there. And Farmington leads 10-0, and Tom, tell us about the touchdown drive. Yeah, eight, an eight-play, 90-yard touchdown drive. Let's not forget that Farmington had the ball back in their own zone. They had to go a long way, and uh, Chase Busenbark uh, doing the heavy lifting there, a few runs, and then, of course, the 24-yard touchdown pass to Donovan. Donovan, of course, as we were talking about here, Donovan, 12 catches on the season. That was number 12. Five of those catches are for touchdowns. Uh, he, he catches the ball, you're scoring points, guys. That's yeah. how it's working with him. Absolutely. Another Ricky Pro out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Poplar Bluff's got it. They're trying to run off that right tackle. Nothing doing. Ethan Henna stepped up in the hole and delivered the shot. Yeah, there's a whole horde of nice defense, uh, defensive players on him right there. And a uh, good job sniffing out the run here. And it uh, forces Popper Bluff back a little bit. So Popper Bluff, their last two drives, they started out in very rosy territory in Farmington's zone. And now they got a make the long long drive themselves. Seven minutes and counting down in this first half. Cornelius Timothy losing a yard right there. A great play by Hennis. Farmington coming up, stacks the line. And now bolt to the outside by Timothy. And Timothy is corralled right there as well. Just nowhere for him to go. He made a try of it. And sealing in that outside was Doug Warren stepping across the line from that defensive end spot. There is a flag down flag down right there at the line of scrimmage, and uh, that's usually in the area of a hold. Brendan and Emsden signaling that he thinks it's against Poplar Bluff, and both of you are right. It is against Poplar Bluff, and it is a hold. And those penalties really upset you if you're a Poplar Bluff fan, because not only do you not get any yards on the run, you actually end up sending your team back as well. Do you want a and second and 20, or do you want a third and 11? I'll take the third and 11, actually. Will you? I wonder what Farmington will do. Well, hopefully they don't have to get into that situation. It's a pretty good problem to have, isn't it? Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, two, yeah. Two yeah, pretty good choices for the defense, anyway, not yeah, so much for the offense. Exactly, exactly. Poplar Bluff is back five yards as Farmington decides to take this one. 
Farmington's special teams are so good. They do a good job getting pressure on the punter, and I think that goes into the thinking when they decided to take that penalty. And a not, not a bad out route that time by Austin Goodrich. That's a tough route for a high school quarterback to throw, though. You step back in your own end zone and try to complete a tight 10-yard out route. That's a tough one to complete, and he sailed it over the head of Goodrich right there. Yeah, it is, and one of the uh, few times that we've seen tonight... Um uh, Griggs uh, really misses target like that, and he's, he's been a pretty good passer so far this game. It's just uh, that time didn't work out, and now we're going to see uh, the first uh, three and outs for Popper Bluff this game. Uh, and now, well, that's what Farmington's hoping for anyway. Though They played that second down over, and so it's a third and 21 here. So Griggs is the quarterback, and he winds up in the gun at his own three-yard line, fakes the handoff, and then driven down. That'll be a loss of three yards. Just nobody was fooled that time, and Farmington bolted in there, and Griggs had his feet crossed up, and it just didn't happen. And now Farmington's got a chance now on this special teams effort. Yeah, they do here, because this is, this is a punt-blocking territory right here. You want to send a house there on the punter for Popper Bluff as uh, he's uh, back there pretty far in his own end zone. Uh, not quite back back heel to the back Sean line, but Sean is the punter. Farmington actually has three return men. Now they drop two more men, and so they won't be sending everybody... The punt, high, not particularly long. Devault under it at the 40-yard line of Poplar Bluff. Glides to the far side. Nice. What a hit. Ah. Oh, mercy. Now, there's going to be a penalty on this play. The official had a very good positioning right there. And I imagine what they could call is a shot to the head. But, wow, that was an amazing hit by Ethan Hennis. And, you know, from up here, we just thought it was a great hit. But down on the field, the officials, obviously, that have a very good vantage point. And maybe he got up too high on him, but that was a bell ringer, folks. And I'm glad that kid is upright and walking off the field. Yes, I, I'm glad he's still uh, still in the current grade he's in and not back in kindergarten. We'll see what the call is here. Um, looks like they're uh, looks like they were walking toward a flag here. Okay, now, so they signaled delay a game. Yeah. I would think that they would have signaled personal foul. I'm, but I, we'll I, see what we'll see what it is here. I'm not sure what the delay would have been because that flag was thrown right as you know the play was ending, yeah, so it wasn't it was. anything like he was getting up slow. Uh, we did see the ball kind of pause for a bit to try to you know judge the ball coming in off the bounce, but well, that's a, that's one of our collisions of the game. Cra yeah. Crown collision was pretty happy with that one. Yes, they're yes. gonna have to rearrange some dents after that one. And then he continued to signal signal delay a game. So interesting. Anyway, first and ten for Farmington after it all gets sorted out. Chase Busenbark, the quarterback, he'll bring an offensive team with him. And over to the right side, Logan Bradley in as a wide receiver for the first time. Evan Dunham at the touchdown maker. He's in the slot to the right side, off to the left. A couple of wide receivers as well, Kyle Hartrip and Doug Warren. One setback, Connor Duvall, and 5.51 remaining here in this first half. Farmington leads 10 to nothing. Busenbark with his heels just inside of the 50-yard line on the Poplar Bluff side. Connor DeVault slips through a couple of guards, ducks his head, now trying to churn forward and power forward. T.J. Williams, though, finally wraps him up. That's a nice run by Connor, though, and a gain of six. And again, T.J. Williams will call his name a few times tonight with the big tackle. And uh, Connor DeVault, as we as we said all along, Connor will not go down on that first contact. He always keeps fighting and fighting and, and ends up being a very hard-earned uh, five-yard gain on the play. Connor, six foot, 185-pound senior, has some nice feet with about a 4640, but his size belies his power. He's a guy, he's a guy that runs tough. Trips to the right side, one man off to the left side. That's Warren. Warren tries to run by his guy. The pass thrown high to him. Dives up to try to grab the ball. This pass is incomplete. I'll tell you what, if you're popular bluff, you might have a small case for offensive pass interference right there, Tom. As yeah. Warren tried to reach through that defensive back, Jake Pulliam. And Jake at 5'7", I thought did as good a job as a guy could on, on his pass coverage right there. Exactly. Doug Warren coming in. You know, I mean, he's matched up with Doug Warren, the uh, big 6'4", 200-pound guy, Pulliam, on the other hand, 5'7", 150. And uh, that's just all, that was just all positioning right there by Pulliam to get in the way of that pass. It was, it was, it was good defense. And, and, yes, as you said, you could have made the argument for uh, – uh, defensive pass interference, or even uh, offensive. Offensive, yeah. Yeah. Connor Duvall has it on a third and five, and he is spun down in the backfield, bursting through Lorenzo Daly. Terrific play by Daly, and a loss of a yard for Connor Duvall, a fourth down coming up. Yeah, and that's one of those rare times to see Duvall go down on that first contact, but that was just a, a refusal to quit by Lorenzo Daly. It looks like Duvall uh, uh, might have been able to break away from that one, but Daly just stuck with him. So now the uh, first uh, three and out for Farmington. Todd Vaughn brings the punt team on the field here. Logan Bradley. Now Poplar Bluff 
smells something rotten in Denmark here, and they won't even put a return man back. They say, Logan Bradley, see how you can place this thing. And Logan kind of pooches it, angles it over to the left side. It hops at the two. It hops at the one. Farmington goes to grab it, throws it back in the field of play, and it's down to the six. They are going to take Connor the vault, but now the officials finally signal a touchback. So that's, that's the way it'll be. 4.20 remaining in the second quarter. 10-0. Farmington on top. And we'll tell you more about this Farmington and Poplar Bluff matchup after this 30-second pause. Captain D's in Farmington announces their dozen butterfly shrimp meal with two sides and two hush puppies for $5.99. Plus, you'll get your choice of four different sauces like Southwest Chipotle, brown sugar bourbon, hickory barbecue, or orange glazed sweet chili. What are you waiting for? Get to Captain D's across from the Family Center on Highway 221 in Farmington. For food you just gotta have, that's Captain D's, Highway 221 in Farmington. Red Poplar Bluff checks the middle of the Farmington line, and uh, they find out it's firm. Cornelius Timothy ran into a wall named Kyle Van Ness right there. No gain for Timothy. Four carries and 27 yards. And we thank you so much for joining us not only tonight on KREI, but also on KLID, on MimoInfo.com. And if you're watching the game on KREI Web TV, well... Hope you're enjoying that as well. So many methods to listen to us and watch us tonight, Tom. It's amazing how we've um, how we've grown from just a simple radio box. Master of all media, apparently. Kyle Van Ness jumping offside right there, and that'll give a five-yard reprieve to the Mules. And we can't say the king of all media because that would be yeah. trademark infringement. Howard Stern, of course. Yes, of course. So uh, Popper Bluff giving uh, the Farmington defense some. Uh, actually, it's the other way around. Uh, Farmington giving Popper Bluff some free yards. Mm -hmm. 338 remaining in this first half. 10 to nothing. Farmington, and you know, I, lo I love watching good competitive games. We've got one here tonight. Yes, we do, and it's, uh, you know, some people might have come into this game and think, oh, you know, last year Farmington beat Popper Bluff 70 to 7, and are thinking, you know what, oh, this is just going to be a walkover. It's been anything but. Mm -hmm. It really has. So Griggs comes under center this time. Oh, oh my! Oh, 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 hello, Roper Garrett. Roper Garrett's arrived tonight, folks. So, mercy, Roper Garrett just punished Austin Bruce. Austin Bruce came in as the leading rusher for the Mules on the year. That was his first carry. He might not get many more after that shot no, if he by keeps, Roper Garrett. If he keeps, keeps getting hit by that Mack truck named Roper Garrett, I mean, Garrett, I, he's making himself uh, some early consideration for our player of the game tonight, uh, our mega sports player of the game. He does that. Yeah, he likes to do that sometimes. He makes a habit of that. Oh, mercy, Roper. Yes. Lorenzo Daly, the lone running back now. It's a third and six. Griggs is back in the gun. Griggs, a quick decision and a nice throw out there to Hicks. Hicks curls it up on the out route to the 40. Now cuts back to the 50. Breaks the tackle down to the 45. And Hicks with a tremendous gain of 30 yards. And, uh, and a good job on the tackle there by uh, Farmington. Uh, Brian Capias coming back there to stop the, uh, the, the big, big play from happening. But... Uh, uh, that was just a, just, a, just a great job by uh, a Popper Bluff. Uh, the quarterback was under some pretty, uh, pretty big duress there, uh, Michael Griggs, and uh, he got the ball out to Hicks, and Hicks uh, just uh, broke away. Griggs has some weird numbers in this game, his stat line. I'll tell you about it coming up after this play. <laughs> it's a first and ten, and Griggs throws that out and up to Austin Goodrich. Sails this one, though, with uh, nary a chance to catch that one by Goodrich. Okay, Michael Griggs in this game is three for eight. With 100 yards passing, he's completed a route for 30 yards to Goodrich. That was on the first play from scrimmage. And then two to Brian Hicks, one for 40 and one for 30. It's kind of like a Jeff George kind of quarterback. All or you nothing, know? Huh? All or nothing, exactly. Exactly. You don't see that a lot in high school football. 237. Remaining in this second quarter, a 10 nothing lead for Farmington. And twice... Poplar Bluff has gotten inside Farmington's 10-yard line. They had a second and goal from the one-yard line of Farmington. And now here's another pass deep to Hicks. And Hicks pulled it in. I don't know how he caught it, I don't but either. he did. And it's a gain of 30 yards even with a pass interference ball going against Kyle Hartrup. Yeah, Hartrup was pretty much draped all over him. And, and Hicks just with the concentration to, to, to pull that ball down from the heavens. And I mean literally because Griggs put, uh, put some loft on that one. And uh, Hartrup. Up, uh, doing his best to try to stop the, the uh, catch from happening, but Hicks just wouldn't have it. And as you said, there is a pass interference on a uh, hard trip. So uh, just uh, just if you're popper bluff, I mean, going deep is working. No kidding. That's an incredible play by Hicks. Hicks, 5'10", 165-pound senior. 
That time he had Hartrip draped all over him. In fact, Hartrip started pulling him down before the ball arrived, and he still managed to grab a hold. Three catches for Hicks tonight and 100 yards. Line of scrimmage is the Farmington 31. Griggs back in the gun. Back to pass. Under pressure and sacked. Ethan Hennis got through. 5'6", 180 pounds, but this guy's cat quick. Cat quick, and he also likes to hit hard as well. We saw him make that big block on the uh, punt return uh, in the previous drive by Farmington, and uh, here we go again. Hennis is uh, just a ball hawk out there. You know what? More, more often than not, the Captain D's catch of the game will go to a Farmington guy, and we still might get one of them, but... I'm going to tip my cap to Brian Hicks. That's a Captain D's catch of the game. Get more crunch for your lunch at Captain D's across from the Family Center on Highway 221 in Farmington. That's good stuff. You got to reward. You got to award a guy for that. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, good, good play is good play. Twins to the left side. Now trips with a tight end. Move back in the slot and the timeout on the field. So 147 remaining in this first half. 10 nothing Farmington on top. And we'll tell you more on the other side of this 30-second pause on KREI and KLID. KREI Farmington and KLID Poplar Bluff. Kerry Buckley Towing and Recovery in Park Hills at 431-2117 or 756-4563 offers 24-hour towing and wrecker service. Kerry Buckley and his employees pride themselves on providing quick and reliable towing, winching, lockouts, jump starts, and roadside service for cars and trucks, as well as towing and wreck recovery for tractor trailers. From big to small, Kerry Buckley Towing and Recovery does it all. Call 431-2117 or 756-4563 for dependable 24-hour service from Kerry Buckley Towing. Going. Now Chase Busenbark comes in this game throwing for 164 yards per game. Michael Griggs is throwing for a modest 71 yards per game. But right now it's Griggs with 130 in the first half and Busenbark with 71. Yeah, talk about a contrast, huh? Mm -hmm. I mean, Griggs just uh, the deep ball working for him. This drive only... Uh, five plays so far in this drive already and they started on their own 20 and they just take no time going down the field. Well, we, we saw a 90-yard drive earlier. Yep. And uh, of course, Poplar Bluff hoping for an 80-yarder on this one, but they face a second and 17 after the big sack. Griggs back in that gun. Out route. Out and up. Uh-oh. Man's open. Goodrich. Couldn't get him though. And now Griggs is in trouble. I but he breaks think. the tackle. And he's scrambling to the left side. Looking for that original line of scrimmage. And he gets back there at the gain of six. That's a lot of work by Griggs for a gain of six. But he made a nice play out of something where he looked like he was locked in a cage for a little bit. Yeah, it was. And that was a good job at the Popper Bluff offensive line to keeping in it as well as Kyle Warren ended up making the tackle for Farmington. But we saw uh, as uh, Griggs was going up the field, they nearly blocked one of Farmington guys into uh, Kyle Warren to prevent him from making that tackle. And uh, the Popper Bluff offensive line staying back there, recognizing that Griggs was under duress and uh, just, just kept blocking for him. Another timeout. We'll take it with him. A minute 28 remaining in our first half. Farmington on top. 10-0 over Poplar Bluff, and we're back in 30 seconds. If you are a retailer and you want to add some delicious, fresh pizza to your offerings, you need to call Hunt Brothers Pizza for the best pizza available. Hunt Brothers offers the original buffet-style pizza to bake and serve. Extra toppings are free. Call 1-800-533-7132. That's 800-533-7132 to start serving Hunt Brothers Pizza at your retail location today. Hi, I'm Sean Waters, General Manager of Benning Ford in Fredericktown. This is Benning Country, a little different kind of dealership. Not here today and gone tomorrow. We pride ourselves on hassle-free sales of what you want and need at a price that works for you. This is my special invitation to come to Benning Ford, where the deal is always worth the drive. We are 15 minutes from almost anywhere. Take the drive just off Highway 67 in Fredericktown or check us out online at BenningFord.com. Michael Griggs passes incomplete on an out route antenna for Austin Goodrich. Goodrich had an out and up time on the last play that if Griggs would have seen that thing develop along that right sideline, there would have been a chance for a score. This time, well, he just threw a bad ball and we've got a fourth down. And this is going to be another one of those times for Popper Bluff where he got to convert on fourth down. And the past couple times, Popper Bluff has seen fourth down and, uh, and yardage has been a lot shorter than 10 yards. But as we've seen this drive, Popper Bluff, they can get the yards whenever, uh, whenever it needs. It looks like they're going to take some more time to think about it. All right, we'll take it with them. 125 remaining in the first half, 10 nothing Farmington. And we're back with a fourth down in a minute. Contractors Air Conditioning and Heating, local 36 contractors, say they are the indoor air specialists 
they mean it. Sheet Metal Contractors will tailor heating and cooling systems specifically designed for your comfort. They offer many services and products that truly benefit your indoor air quality, such as air duct cleaning, electronic air cleaners, electrostatic filters, humidifiers, and more for commercial, industrial, and residential applications. Call Sheet Metal Contractors in DeSoto at 337-2150, where excellence prevails. Midwest Orthopedics Group with Dr. Scott Van Ness and Dr. Christopher Sloan are orthopedic surgeons and podiatrists who offer total joint replacements. Arthroscopic surgery, carpal tunnel, fracture care, workman's compensation cases, foot care and surgery. And new patients are welcome. All surgery and care done locally in Farmington. That's Midwest Orthopedics Group, just down from Buffalo Wild Wings in the Midwest Professional Building in Farmington. Midwest Orthopedics Group. and 10 for Poplar Bluff. They've got it at the Farmington 32-yard line. Michael Griggs, the quarterback, throws a deep out route. This one's intended for Austin Goodrich. And once again, we'll see Poplar Bluff, Tom, turning it over on downs deep in Farmington territory. Yeah, and that time there, uh, Griggs had a lot of time to throw that ball, and he, he still looked like he was a little little happy feet back there a little bit. He, he rushed it, and we saw it there, uh, as we've seen a few times tonight by Griggs, overthrowing his man just a little bit. And uh, that's sometimes that's just, you know, how close you get to uh, first down and uh, turnover on downs, just a few yards. Well, about a 40% completion guy, and then, you know, it's accuracy. Probably like to see it improve a little bit. A minute 21 remaining in the first half. Farmington has a quick strike offense. And let's see if they can push the football down the field now. Chase Busenbark back with time to throw. Breaks the pocket, rolls to his right, directs a little traffic, fires it down the field, and this one sails over the head of Alex Sebastian. Yeah, good job by Busenbark there too. Once he uh, once he got out of the pocket, he settled his feet and uh, and it looked like he had a chance to get his guy down there. But I think he was just more worried about not taking the sack there. So we're gonna see second down. Well, that's terrific coverage though. I mean, he waited, he waited, he even extended the play, and still nobody uh, was able to break free for him. Absolutely. I mean, Busenbark's a quick quarterback back there too. So good job to get out of the way as well. Warren off to the left side, and Devault joins him in the slot right there. Alex Sebastian, a wing back. Busenbark rolls to the left, sees a little seam, breaks one tackle, breaks two tackles, stiff arms a man, trying to push his way forward. He gains six yards. Sometimes the smallest seams is all you need, especially if you're Chase Busenbark, as, as uh, he made something out of nothing there. He looked like he did want to go deep and down down the field, but again, the popper bluff coverage is there on, just there on the ball, and uh, Busenbark is making his own magic on offense. Popper Bluff basically in a full-time nickel with two linebackers, and Farmington still is not able to run the football for wide big open. chunks, but here's a wide-open play to Alex Sebastian. That time he broke free, and Busenbark hit him in stride. A 63-yard touchdown pass, and Farmington strikes with under a minute remaining in the first half. What a pass by Busenbark, and, uh, and uh, just a wide, wide, wide open Alex Sebastian there for the touchdown. Farmington up. 16 to nothing. Second touchdown pass of the game for Busenbark, and that's his 11th of the year. For Alex Sebastian, and we saw the speed down the right side, and Busenbark just put him right on the hands for him. Sebastian with that big 63 yard touchdown catch. Logan Radley sends it up and through, and it's a 17 zip lead for Farmington. 37 seconds remaining in our first half. We've got your kickoff in a minute. Hi. I'm Sean Waters, General Manager of Benning Ford in Fredericktown. This is Benning Country, a little different kind of dealership. Not here today and gone tomorrow. We pride ourselves on hassle-free sales of what you want and need at a price that works for you. This is my special invitation to come to Benning Ford, where the deal is always worth the drive. We are 15 minutes from almost anywhere. Take the drive just off Highway 67 in Fredericktown. Or check us out online at BenningFord.com. Hi, this is Jeff and Paige from Auto Spa Car Washes. When you wash your car, truck, boat, motorcycle, four-wheeler, or whatever wheeler at Auto Spa, you're using our exclusive Cotton Soft water system. This system will clean your whatever wheeler, leaving it spot-free with a finish that looks great today and for years to come. Wash your car at Auto Spa, home of the free air freshener. To find an Auto Spa near you, go to myautospa.net. Wash your car. Wash your car. Wash, Wash your, your car, car at Auto Spa. If you are a retailer and you want to add some delicious, fresh pizza to your office... <laughs> Hey, welcome you back to Mo Hale Memorial Stadium, man. Farmington kicking it off now to Poplar Bluff. Brian Hicks, we've seen him great in the past.
passing game as a wide receiver. He's the deep man right here as Logan Bradley squibs this one down the field and it rolls out of bounds. But, Tom, good touchdown drive by uh, Farmington. They got it uh, when they grabbed it on downs back from Poplar Bluff, and uh, they had a big play mixed in with a couple of nice scrambles from uh, Rosenborg. That's right. They wasted no time just on the first set of downs. It was on third down when he made the big pass, and... Uh, Almost uh, Andy Griggs-esque with the way that Chase Busenbark got the big uh, big pass in there. We've uh, we've been waiting for that for a little while. So Busenbark, I believe that pretty much matches him up with Griggs as far as yards goes on on, on passing. We'll get that determined here in just a bit. You're right. It is. So uh, so uh, Busenbark, Sebastian, 63-yard touchdown pass. His second touchdown pass of the game. And we've been talking a lot about the running game so far, Farmington, but it's been via the air that the Farmington Knights are getting their points. You're quite a student. <laughs> For one thirty for Griggs. So well there done, we well done, Tom. There you the, go. The difference, two touchdowns for Busenbach. Yes, that is a big difference. So Griggs at the fifty-yard line and a great effort by Austin Goodrich, but he can't hold on. Austin Goodrich, six three, one eighty-five. I've seen enough out of him athletically. I think this kid could be a college athlete. I really do. Yeah, he could. He could play at the second level. I know we've seen, we've seen him a lot on defense as well. I mean, at least as a secondary player, he might have a chance at the second uh, at, at the second level for sure. Um, but uh, Robert Bluff has has some very talented players. I mean, you gotta I mean you gotta take your hat to him. I mean, Griggs is impressed tonight. Uh, Griggs is a good athlete, but his, his accuracy yes. ha- hasn't been there consistently. Oh, he's still young. He hands it off right there, and then. Rope for Garrett, hangs on, and then spins around Lorenzo Daly. And Daly, in essence, throws him forward for four yards. And Daly is their future back, and we've seen uh, other players for Popper Bluff uh, getting the uh, glory tonight. Daly, we mm-hmm. haven't called his name too much tonight. 14 seconds remaining in this first half. As the hustle the plan with Trent Udaly. 9-8, twins to the right side, twins to the left side. Michael Griggs, the quarterback, and Daly beside him. 3-2, fake the handoff. Griggs going to run the keeper, and Griggs will just float out in the middle of the field and get tossed down at the line of season. The first half comes to an end. 17-0. Farmington on top, dominating in the yardage. And I think uh, right now, Tom, the team that everyone expected to be on top is but a good fight by Popper Bluff. Yes, and they're not on top as many people would have, might have expected to them at this point. Popper Bluff putting up a very good fight. We'll see what, how they come out in the second half. All right, Tom and I will figure up some numbers. We'll have a little halftime commentary for you as well. But coming up next, it's our halftime show, sponsored by Auto Spa Car Washes. So we, we join Tom Lively. <laughs> week on AM 800 and KREI and we will get you more scores as they roll in. It's the Auto Spa Car Wash Halftime Show on Regional Radio. Hi, this is Bill Seek with Eagle Bank Mortgage. Are you looking to refinance or purchase a new home? I've helped many families and I can help you too. We are approved for MHDC, VA, and USDA Rural Housing 100% loans. Call me right now at Eagle Bank Mortgage 314-398. I have a special rate for re- give you even more money, and I'll be here from start to finish to help you through the process. Call now, 314-808-8390. I'm Bill Seek with Eagle Bank Mortgage, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Belgrade State Bank is family-owned and has been delivering personalized service since 1906. They're your community bank. Come in now to open a new checking account and receive a free gift. You can also sign up to receive text alerts. Belgrade State Bank offers online banking and bill pay for its customers. They're conveniently located in Belgrade, Caledonia, Deloge, Farmington, Potosi, and on the web at BelgradeStateBank.com. Belgrade State Bank, member FBIC. Hi, this is Mike Lowry of the Lowry Law Firm. My associates and I focus on criminal defense, DWIs, traffic violations, personal injury, and workers' When you need a reliable attorney that understands the system, along with your feelings and frustrations, you need the attorneys at the Lowry Law Firm. We're on your side. Call us today at 797-3131 or 931-8787 for your free initial consultation. The Lowry Law Firm, setting the standard in legal defense. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertisements. The Medicine Shop Pharmacy in Festus knows how important the right pharmacy can be. From a friendly, helpful staff... Free delivery to a drive through for your convenience. It's time to look at your choices. Choose the Medicine Shop Pharmacy in located across from the post office on 116 Walnut in Festus. They always treat you right and they know what you need. When it comes to 
the collision repair on your vehicle, call Brad Wheaton and the team at Crown Collision Center. For nine straight years, Crown Collision Center has been ranked third in the nation in customer satisfaction at 98%. Recognized by Motor Trend Magazine, they perform all collision repairs on any make and model, foreign or domestic. All done by factory trained certified technicians and their five-star rated. State-of-the-art facility and all work carries a written lifetime warranty. Call Brad Wooten for your collision repair at Crown Collision Center. 800-996-2566. It is the Auto Spa Car Wash Halftime Show on a regional radio. Just one update on the scores. Score the same, North County 21, Windsor 13. That is officially at halftime now. And thank you very much to all of the people updating our scores out in the field this evening here on regional radio. Well, we take a look at uh, the highlights from our game of the week on AM 800 KREI, the Farmington Knights and Poplar Bluff the Mules. Farmington went up early on Poplar Bluff with a 3 to nothing lead, then would add to it with this play right here. And now they look to the middle of the field. Benefits wide open in the end zone. Touchdown! A 24-yard touchdown pass. Chase Busenbark to Evan Donovan. Farmington, as they would add another six with this 60-plus yard play. Here's a wide-open play to Alex Sebastian. That time he broke free, and Busenbark hit him in stride. A 63-yard touchdown pass, and Farmington strikes with under a minute remaining in the first half. And that's where we are, 10 nothing or 16 nothing rather, Farmington on top of a popular bluff at home this evening. Once again, that game on AM800 and KREI, also online at MimoInfo.com. Click on KREI Web TV and pick up a video feed of that game as well. 56 degrees, the Auto Spa Car Wash Halftime Show continues next on Regional Radio. Don't let an unfortunate sports injury keep you on the sidelines. Get back in the game with chiropractor and board-certified chiropractic sports physician, Dr. Jeff Huck at Huck Chiropractic in Deloge. If you've never tried chiropractic care before, you'll be amazed at the results. Dr. Huck would like to wish the Central Rebels the best of luck on another winning season. Give Dr. Jeff Huck a call at Huck Chiropractic Life Center at 518-0608. Huck Chiropractic in Deloge. I'm Mary, and I'm from Hillsboro. I got rid of the cane, I got rid of the walker, and I feel so completely different. I'm able to do activities I haven't been able to do for quite a while. So I'm very satisfied with knee replacement surgery. Mary had great results. You can, too. Doctors Craig Rubel, Paul Maynard, and Robert Smaney treat all aspects of orthopedics. Don't live in pain. Offices in Festus and Farmington. Call 636-933-7400. It is the Auto Spa Car Wash Halftime Show on Regional Radio. We take a look at some of the highlights from our Game of the Week here on J98. After a big play by McClellan, the next play would turn into seven points for Hillsborough. David McClellan, number 38 with the carry, gets him all the way up to the 15th. Give him the pitch to the right side, and he's still going. Touchdown, Hillsborough, 15-yard run for Nathan Wall. Central would then answer back. Again with three backs in the backfield. We'll see this set pretty much all night. He'll hand it off to the second man through. Big number 45. Breaks a few tackles to the 10. He could be going to the 5. Touchdown on the run. It was Levi Sutton again. The extra point would be no good for the Rebels, but they would take the lead on the next possession. They've got a receiver split out to the right. One back in the backfield. Comfort's going to drop back and pass. He'll fire to the left side, and Richardson, he's got it. To the 10, to the 5. Uh, Getting it across, touchdown, Park Hill Central. And a Central right before half with the second left on the clock. A long field goal. Comfort is the holder right at the 25-yard line. He will take the snap. It's there, the kick. It's up. It does not look like it's going to make it. Is it good? Yes, it is. Oh, he my. just put it in on the lower left corner of the goalpost. And that would be your halftime score on J98 Central 16, Hillsborough 7. When we return, we'll see if we have time to run down all of the scores. 
If not, we'll send it back out to the guys in the field. It's the Auto Spa Car Wash Halftime Show on Regional Radio. Kerry Buckley, Towing and Recovery in Park Hills at 431-2117 or 756-4563 offers 24-hour towing and record service. Kerry Buckley and his employees pride themselves on providing quick and reliable towing, winching, lockouts, jump starts, and roadside service for cars and trucks, as well as towing and wreck recovery for tractor trailers. From big to small, Kerry Buckley, Towing and Recovery does it all. Call 431 one twenty one seventeen or seven five six forty five sixty three for dependable twenty four hour service from Kerry Buckley Towing. Jefferson Regional Medical Center is proud to support two farmers markets in our community and encourages you to visit them each week. Wednesdays in Crystal City, local growers, bakers set up at Grace Presbyterian Church at the corner of Bailey Road and Mississippi Avenue. Saturday mornings in DeSoto, fresh produce and much more can be found at St. Andrew's United Methodist Church on Rock Road. Jefferson Regional Medical Center encourages you to eat healthy and visit your local farmers markets. Don't do it. Don't buy a pre-owned vehicle without seeing what Auto Centers Bonterre can do for you. Hi, I'm Jason Hale, owner of Auto Centers Bonterre. And because we sell our entire inventory every month, I guarantee our cost is lower, ensuring you a better price, better trade, and ultimately better payments. Come buy it right at Auto Centers Bonterre. Auto Centers. Buy it right. Eddie Marino, Athletic Director at Hillsborough High School. As a five-star leadership school, Hillsborough promotes the value of participation, sportsmanship, team play, and personal excellence. As we celebrate homecoming, we would like to welcome back all of our alumni and thank our community, parents, staff, coaches, and players. Go Hawks! It is the Auto Spa Car Wash Halftime Show on Regional Radio. One game was played last night, and we will run through that. It was the Crystal City hosting the St. Vincent Indians, and the Hornets taking the win 26-16. Crystal City coach Ken White said they were down 16 to nothing heading into half. They just came out and did what they needed to do in the second half. They played more physical like they need to and uh, took care of the ball, and we didn't make mistakes. Um, defensively, we, we started doing, you know, first half we didn't we didn't do our assignments right, and uh, we were giving them big lanes. In the second half, we kind of shut that down. So, uh, and we had 19 points in the, in the third quarter, and we got another touchdown in the fourth quarter. So, uh, you know, a, a good turnaround for us. More scores are coming in as we speak. We will update those for you right now. Once again, Fredericktown with the lead on their homecoming, 14-6 over Potosi. It is our update to Game of the Week on J98. Central on the top of Hillsboro, the Game of the Week on the boot, 16-7. It is Farmington over Poplar Bluff, 16-0 at halftime. That game on AM 800 at KREI. It's North County over Windsor at halftime, 21 to 13. DeSoto is leading Festus 20 to 14 on AM 1400 KJF. Herculaneum with a five-point lead over Carothersville right now, 12 to 7. Also Parkway South 27, Northwest 0. Parkway North is 7 to nothing over Seckman. Games tomorrow, St. Jen at John Burroughs, also Maplewood at Perryville, Valley Catholic versus Western at the St. Francis Borgia, DuPo, Illinois at Jefferson R7. We'll be back with more of the Auto Spa Car Wash Halftime Show next on Regional Radio. The wait is over. It's finally here. Parkland CrossFit has opened their new downtown Farmington facility. The area's first and only CrossFit affiliate, specializing in elite group fitness, sport-specific athletic training, general physical preparedness training for all ages and skill levels. Our professional coaches are on hand for every workout. No more guessing what to do. Check out our grand opening September 24th, barbecue and fitness competition, more details on parklandcrossfit.com. Call or text 518-4393. If you or a family member are considering dentures, you've probably seen the too-good-to-be-true denture prices. Many times there are add-on charges, adjustment charges, and hidden fees that come back to, well, bite you. Not with Dr. Mike at St. Francis Plaza Dental. Dr. Mike will outline exactly what your cost is up front and honor that cost, period. Learn more at your gentle dentist. 
Mike.com. I'm Dr. Mike, your gentle dentist. I'm gentle with people and gentle with prices. Corks one into right down the line. It may go. Go crazy, folks. Go crazy. Swing and a long one. Right field. Way back and long gone. St. Louis Cardinals won the National League wild card. You can be a wild card winner, too. Get your wild card chance to win tickets to a Cardinals home playoff game. Go to MyMoInfo.com and register for your chance to win. Your St. Louis Cardinals wild card chance to win tickets is brought to you by Trattoria Giuseppe's Italian Restaurant in Auto, Jefferson Regional Medical Center in Festus, and SMTS Transportation in Fredericktown. Cardinals win this one. Eight nothing as Carpenter goes the distance, shuts him out on just two bases. The drawing for a pair of tickets for Tuesday's wild card game is Monday, so log on and register now at MimoInfo.com. One registration per person, please. A swing and a miss, and that's a winner! That's a winner! We welcome you back in to Hillsboro Hawks homecoming here in the game of the week on Kickin' Country, J98, the boot. On the back side of the Maple Valley Shopping Center in Farmington. And finally, many ask, will I save money? The easiest question yet. Of course you will. We're Cartridge World in Farmington. We make it easy for you to save money at Cartridge World. Midwest Orthopedics Group with Dr. Scott Van Ness and Dr. Christopher Sloan are orthopedic surgeons and podiatrists who offer total joint replacements. Arthroscopic surgery, carpal tunnel, fracture care, workman's compensation cases, foot care, and surgery. And new patients are welcome. All surgery and care done locally in Farmington. That's Midwest Orthopedics Group, just down from Buffalo Wild Wings in the Midwest Professional Building in Farmington. Midwest Orthopedics Group. <laughs> Tom Willenbring right there. I'm Chad Speaker. Thanks so much for joining us tonight on KREI. Kathy Capai is the third member of our team, engineering and operating our game tonight. 17 nothing is the score. And so Farm Farmington certainly uh, not being threatened or closed in on right now. And Poplar Bluff doing enough uh, certainly to impress us tonight. Oh, absolutely. Poplar Bluff is still very much in this game. I mean, we've seen uh, Poplar Bluff at times on offense being able to chew up some yards just like that. And, uh, and so far this game, uh, Popper Bluff having six drives so far. And, and this game could be even a lot closer, Chad, because remember the first two drives that Popper Bluff had, they got down to very deep in Farmington territory. They ended up on the Farmington 22, the first drive. The second drive, they, en they ended up at the Farmington 5. And, uh, and it was in that drive, I believe, Tom, that they were in the, even inside the one-yard line. Yes, and then they got pushed back a little bit, and then they had to turn over on downs. Then we saw them come back on the third drive, get down to the Farmington 10 after an interception, and then again turn it over on downs after Hicks dropped the pass. So, I mean, they, Popper Bluff has had their chances, and we've seen them kind of go backwards a little bit from there, but I'm sure uh, in the locker room for, uh, for Popper Bluff, uh, uh, the head coach for Popper Bluff is, is, is talking to him and just telling them to come out like you did in the first half because Popper Bluff came out, and they, and, they, and they wanted to show that they belonged out there on the football field, and they did early on. Played physical, and uh, they also won the toss and deferred, yeah. so they will get the ball to start the second half of play. We'll break down uh, some of the halftime numbers and take a look at the stats here on KREI and KLID. We hope you never need us, but when you do, Midwest Convenient Care will be there. From high fevers to broken bones. Walk into either of our locations, and you will be greeted by caring and professional staff. I'm Dr. Guy Roberts, one of the physicians at Midwest Convenient Care. Nothing is more important than your family's health. That's why we're here. Midwest Convenient Care, next to Lowe's in Farmington and behind Dairy Queen in Bon Terre, or online at MidwestConvenientCare.com. Midwest Convenient Care, we're there when you need us. Hi, this is Mary Lee, owner of Earth Mother Health Foods. Did you know we're the largest, most complete health food store in southeast Missouri? You know, if you're feeling tired, maybe you need to be on a good vitamin. We invite you to come into Earth Mother and get a free sample of a vitamin that you can feel the same day you take it. Now, stop by Earth Mother Health Foods. We have 3,500 square feet of products to meet your health care needs. That's at Earth Mother Health Foods, 220 East Harrison in downtown Farmington, 573-756-7852. Belgrade State Bank is family owned and has been delivering personalized service since 1906. They're your community bank. 
Come in now to open a new checking account and receive a free gift. You can also sign up to receive text alerts. Belgrade State Bank offers online banking and bill pay for its customers. They're conveniently located in Belgrade, Caledonia, Deloge, Farmington, Potosi, and on the web at BelgradeStateBank.com. Belgrade State Bank, member FDIC. It's one, it's when it's owned, it's come to show me rent to own. Hi, I'm Gary Romine, owner of Show Me Rent to Own. If you can hear this ad, then there's a Show Me Rent to Own location near you. Want a new laptop or big screen TV? Shop Show Me Rent to Own. Need a new washer and dryer? Shop Show Me Rent to Own. We have what you want and need. Want it, need it, rent it, own it. Show Me Rent to Own. The show you rental company of the Show Me State. Break down the numbers from the first half as Farmington leads 17 to nothing. And the total yardage led by Farmington, but the disparity not huge. 249 total yards for Farmington, 198 for Poplar Bluff. The Mules gaining 68 on the ground, 130 through the air. And the big play is where they were particularly effective in the passing game. Michael Griggs, uh, 4 for 12. That's right, only four passes did he complete, <laughs> but they were for 30, 40, 30, and 30 yards apiece. And, uh, you know, and that's you know that's what good coaches will do. They will identify where defense is attacking, what they're doing, and they'll try to find a spot where they can take advantage. And for Poplar Bluff, they said we have one-on-one -on -one outside coverage. Yep. We feel good about our athletes. We're going to send it downfield. Oh, absolutely. And and, and a lot of times too, uh, a lot of what they do is just taking advantage, as you said, of coverage. Uh, sometimes you know on size as well. Um, and that's something we see Farmington do a lot with uh, Doug Warren uh, matching up against the, their five-seven guy. And we've seen that you know even even on the side of Poplar Bluff as well. So give credit. Uh, to, to Popper Bluff for seeing the opportunity there to uh, go deep at times. And, and we've seen, too, Griggs has an arm. He does have a very good arm. It's just that sometimes he gets a little, uh, I guess, a little nervous. Yeah. He has a, it's a good arm. He, he can send it downfield. Not particularly precise. Yes. You, you yes, as evidenced by the 4 for 12. Griggs has the uh, most carries of the game for Poplar Bluffy, 12 of those for 12 yards. Lorenzo Daly leads the Mules in rushing, 6 carries and 30 yards for him. And then Cornelius Timothy has 27 yards on 4 carries. He had the big run of the game for Poplar Bluff of 24 yards. Farmington has split it not quite down the middle, but pretty close. 115 on the ground, 134 in the air. Chase Busenbark was kind of getting outdueled a little bit by Griggs uh, for a while. Musenbark's first eight completions were good for 71 yards. The ninth one went to Alex Sebastian, and that was a 63-yard <laughs> touchdown. So the final first half numbers look pretty good for Chase. Nine for 14, 134 yards through the air. He has two scores and one interception. That interception, though, wasn't anything to be embarrassed about. Boy, no. that, was, that was an incredible play by a great athlete as uh, Kimbrell Miller went high and grabbed that one out of the air. On the ground, Farmington uh, is getting a nice game from Connor DeVault. 13 carries for Connor and 68 yards in the first half. And you commented on this in the first half as well, Tom. You liked the running of Chase Busenbark. Yeah. Six carries and 47 yards for him. Yeah, he's very efficient on the ground. And, we, we, and, we, and our big theme of the first half with Farmington was vision. Uh, Busenbark as well as Connor DeVault both being able to see the holes as they open up. And Busenbark's one of those guys that... He doesn't need a very big hole in order to exploit it. I mean, he's, 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 he's got the quicks and he's, and he's got the vision to, uh, to, to make things happen with his feet. Something else that I think he does particularly well with his feet is throw on the run. Yeah. The, guy, the guy rolls and still, he doesn't seem like he compromises much accuracy when he's on the move. No, he doesn't. We've seen him uh, a couple times as well. I mean, you, if you're a right-handed quarterback, you prefer to roll out to the right and throw. Sometimes he's rolled out to the left and thrown across his body, but mm -hmm. he still has a lot of touch. Yeah, he sure does. And that's something that we saw the backup quarterback last week, uh, Justin Bang, used to great effect against McClure North when he threw for 187 yards in the second half alone. Bame has not entered this game with Busenbark, the starter, and playing healthy and playing pretty well tonight. Well, and that's one thing, too. I mean, we're, I mean, we're talking coming into this game, you know, Popper Bluff keeping this to a 17 nothing deficit. You know, you would think maybe you would see, you know, Bame this game if the game got out of the hand too much. But, you know, Popper Bluff's keeping it close enough to where I'm not sure we'll see a whole lot of the second stringers of Farmington tonight. I'm I'm impressed with Poplar Bluff, and, and as Coach uh, Baruch told us in the pregame show, he said we have eight sophomores that get regular minutes for us. Yep. And, you know, a guy that comes in and only halfway through his first season back is able to make this much improvement with a young squad. 
Watch out for Poplar Bluff in a couple of years. Uh, Mark Baruse coached there, actually, from 1997 through 2001. They were in the state playoffs twice over that span in 98 and 2000. Absolutely, and uh, and, and Bruce, you know, he, he has history with Popper Bluff, and, and he's, he's, he's led them to glory in the past, and now he's back, and, and if you're a Popper Bluff fan, you, you should feel a lot a lot better about the future of Popper Bluff because, as you mentioned, you know they, they 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 got the coach back, and now they also have a lot of young talent coming up the pipeline as well. Popper Bluff really not too, too far away from having a great year either. It was only two years ago under a different coaching staff that they did go eight and four. So, just the one down year, one and nine a season ago. The second half, who knows what'll happen? Maybe Popper Bluff will tighten this thing up. Maybe Farmington will find a stride. We'll find out in one minute right here on K R E I K L I D. It's when it's owned it. Come to Show Me Rent to Own. Hi, I'm Gary Romine, owner of Show Me Rent to Own. If you can hear this ad, then there's a Show Me Rent to Own location near you. Want a new laptop or big screen TV? Shop Show Me Rent to Own. Need a new washer and dryer? Shop Show Me Rent to Own. We have what you want and need. Want it, need it, rent it, own it. Show Me Rent to Own. The show you rental company of the Show Me State. The wait is over. It's finally here. Parkland CrossFit has opened their new downtown Farmington facility, the area's first and only CrossFit affiliate, specializing in elite group fitness, sport-specific athletic training, general physical preparedness training for all ages and skill levels. Our professional coaches are on hand for every workout. No more guessing what to do. Check out our grand opening September 24th, barbecue and fitness competition. More details on parklandcrossfit.com. Call or text 518-4393. We'd like to thank uh, Coltons and Jack Hahn and the staff of Coltons for taking care of our sports crew and filling us up uh, before the game. And uh, th we have a grueling task tonight, of course, Tom, so we're able to find the power we need for the second half as well. Yes, very appreciative, Coltons, for uh, giving us the fuel we need to keep going. And, of course, we're appreciative of Kathy Capias back at the studio for keeping us on the air as well. There so a lot, lot, uh, lot of gears in motion tonight. A few more sponsors to thank. Uh, County Do-It Center in St. Genevieve, Accent Marketing in Farmington, Crown Collision Center in Farmington, Sheet Metal Contracting in DeSoto, St. Francis Plaza Dental in Lettington. Let's thank uh, Parkland CrossFit, Long John Silver, Cartridge World, Hunt Brothers Pizza, all in Farmington. Also, Sam Sism Ford, Lee Concrete, Midwest Orthopedic Group, Red Rooster Crafts and Supply, and McFally's Pizzeria in Farmington. We thank those fine sponsors for allowing us to bring you Farmington football tonight and every night during the football season. Poplar Bluff will have the football as we start this second half of player. They'll receive the kickoff anyway. And they will move it from our right to our left as we look at and describe the action to you here tonight. The far sidelines, uh, we actually broadcast from the visiting sidelines. I understand they changed that a few years back here in Farmington. That part sparsely populated, but the Farmington sideline nearly all full tonight. So good crowd on hand and really almost a perfect night to watch football. A little bit of a chill in the air. and. You know, there's kind of that feeling that comes along with football. It's finally starting to feel that way. Yeah, it's starting to feel very much like football weather. Not too cold yet at this point. We're not talking frozen tundra yet here, although I know that time is soon approaching. But, uh, yes, just a perfect night for football tonight. And uh, and as the uh, Farmington kicking team takes the field here, we'll see what Popper Bluff can do on offense here. And it's kind of interesting strategy by Mark Roos to uh, start the second half off receiving. You know, they're only down 17 to nothing. They can make something happen here right away. you got to wonder if he had that in mind when he uh, decided to uh, defer. Farmington, a very adept onsides kicking team as well. And they have several different plays. They'll do a straight onsides kick. They'll have a kick where uh, Bradley will chip it over the top of the defense. So they've got a lot of different uh, items in the special teams playbook. And Bradley's still hanging in there, too, fighting a little bit of an illness. But he's still, uh, you wouldn't know it by the way he's been playing tonight. He's been very good both kicking and on uh, in the secondary. Yeah. So Bradley going to boot this one deep. Hicks glides over and then stepping in front of him. The ball's taken by Timothy. Timothy knocked down. Guess who? Roper Garrett right there again. Roper Garrett, I tell you what, he is just... He has been on the ball. If you're holding the ball, if you're Popper Bluff, you're going to get a visit from Roper Garrett tonight. That's just the way it's going to be. And and Roper, I know uh, Busenbarks had a good game tonight, but Roper, I think he's making him a, a very solid case for our Mega Sports Player of the Game tonight. Right. A very solid case. We'll keep track of that because I thought yes. I love watching the kid play. Yes, absolutely. Little helmet issue with one of the Farmington players, so the officials will stop play and try to get the equipment 
to work. That's Connor DeVault, and it appears that he has the problem solved. All right, so the Poplar Bluff offense going to work. They've got the white unis with the burgundy helmets, letters, and numbers. Michael Griggs, the quarterback, back in the gun, and he'll hand it off to the lone running back there. Boy, he just swallowed. I mean, just crushed. Kyle Van Ness there leading the charge from that nose guard position, and that was Cornelius Timothy, and nothing happening for him right there on a loss of one. Yeah, Popper Bluff liking to vary up their running backs a little bit. Coming into the game, Lorenzo Daly, the feature back, the five foot nine hundred sixty five pound senior, but he's only gotten the ball a couple times tonight, and uh, he had that early fumble deep in uh, the Farmington zone that might be uh, factoring into his uh, playing time a bit. Timothy, the lone setback once again, twins to the left side, one man off to the right side, and Griggs looks deep once again, and once again going for Hicks. And a nice catch over on the sideline by an assistant coach. <laughs> very, very well done, an very elderly gentleman. Yeah. No panic, just, just washed it right into his hands. But uh, uh, regardless, there is a flag on the play. It's going to go against Popper Bluff here by the uh, initial motion by the ref. And once again, Farmington will think about whether they'd like to see a third and 11 or a second and 16. And they say a third and 11 fits us a little better on this one. 11-18 remaining in the third frame, 17-0, Farmington leading Poplar Bluff. Poplar Bluff averaging just 16.8 points a game, but they have their high point output last game against Gosnell, Arkansas. 32 points they scored in that one. Now they lost that game, 43-32, but very competitive. Twins to the right, one to the left. They've got the good tight end, Quentin Michael, in there as well. But they haven't looked to him in the passing game. They've used him mostly as a blocker. This pass complete to Goodrich, and Goodrich is shut down by Kyle Hartrup, who closed the gap and sent him down. That's one of those textbook tackles, yes. Tom. The dip, the butt, the club, the wrap him up, and the finish him off. Yeah, it's not quite a Roper Garrett, oh my gosh, tackle, but it was just one of those tackles that you just, you just, you, that's the way you teach you how to tackle. Get the shoulder into the gut and just drive him back. So very good job by Kyle Hartrup. We've called his name a few times tonight, making a few good plays on defense. That's the first pass that Griggs has completed under 30 yards. Well, maybe modesty is not his uh, uh, best suit. <laughs> This has been an interesting stat line. 10.38 yeah. and counting down here in the third. 17 nothing. Farmington leads here. And Sean Sisney is on to punt. Sisney with a boomer. Connor DeVault, in fact, calls for a care fat, fair catch or a care fetch. Uh, either, way, either way you want to term it. And Farmington takes over at its own 44. Nice punt by Sisney. Yeah, it was. Very nice punt. And a good coverage by Popper Bluff as well. Getting down there and not giving DeVault a chance to run back. He's the kind of guy that would like to take that back at times if he can. Has one touchdown uh, returning, in fact, and another one that went to the one-yard line. So a guy that can definitely flip the field. Absolutely. So uh, now Farmington. And they're going to get some pretty good field position here to start off. One of their better field position starts of the game, in fact, at their own 44. Yeah, they uh, start on their own 48 the first drive and uh, Popper Bluff 47 one time. There's DeVault now, and DeVault is driven down by that big nose guard boy, T.J. Williams. You know, we, we called out Kyle Van Ness's name on the first play when Poplar Bluff had it, and there's the 325-pound yes. T.J. Williams. And this guy is a junior. Mm -hmm. And he, he he isn't what you'd call fleet or nimble, no. but he can move for his size. And if this guy keeps working, he's going to be a prospect. And the key as he runs off the field here to take uh, take a bit of a breather here. He's pretty actually he's ran off there pretty quick, Not I should bad. say. But, but but DJ, I mean he I mean he's a big guy, and uh, he knows how to use the size. That's that's a big key. A lot of a lot of players that are big. Might be a little tentative, but TJ is not one of those guys. Four wides to the right, one to the left side for Boozenbark. Boozenbark looking to his left, comes back to the right to DeVault, and DeVault is quickly enveloped by three tacklers and the man that finally got there to make the play, Lorenzo Daly. But nice pursuit by this Poplar Bluff defense, and that is actually a loss of a half a yard on a completion to the ball. Yeah, don't see that too much too often. You're losing yards on a completion on a forward pass, and, and the vaults have been stuffed two times here to start off here. They're keying on the vault here early on. So a third and ten for Farmington here. First two downs not producing much. Bark looks over to the sideline as well as his skill position teammates. Alex Sebastian, wide to the right side, dumbing in the slot right there. Busenbark rolling to the left, trying to set his shoulders, and he's crushed. He is hit in the backfield and dropped for a 10-yard loss. That's a sack way back in the backfield. And that's a nice job by Cody Fromm getting back there. He's the one that made the play, but there was an avalanche of uh, burgundy and white all over the place. Yeah, there are a few players in there, but Corey Fromm laying the final lick, and that's actually, I believe, the first time Busenbark has been actually sacked for a loss tonight, if I'm not mistaken. Right, Tom. Uh, I mean, the, the Farmington uh, offensive line has been protecting him pretty well to this point. Bradley to punt it. And this is a 
Hunter is sideways and rolls over itself, taken by Daly, and Daly with an eight-yard return back to the 38-yard line. Pablo Brook, we saw them play some stiff defense in the first half, and they've come again and started in the second half by turning Farmington away three and out on its first possession. 8-27, remaining in the third. 17-0 the score. Farmington on top. This is week number six, and so you've got one more game before district play starts. And as we take a look at the SEMO North, technically it's Sykeston out in front of everybody with two wins inside of the SEMO North, being Poplar and Jackson. Cape Central 1-0. Far- this is Farmington's first game in the SEMO North of the year. And we all know when district play starts that, you know, those standings that you just uh, uh, spat out, a uh, lot can change. Mm-hmm. Back in the gun, Michael Griggs looks to the left side. Coverage supplied by Jared Dunlap against Hicks. Oh, Hicks dropped Hi. one. That's the first time we've seen Hicks drop one. But here's a flag coming out of the back pocket of the official. And Dunlap may have nudged him early. Yeah, that could be the case there. Hicks looked like he had a bearing on the ball. And uh, and it looked like he, 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 he could have made that catch. And that's just kind of like one of those uh, Jackie Smith dropping in the end zone. Oh, bless your heart kind of drops. Um, but uh, but this is still going to be a uh, proper bluff's benefit because pass interference on Farmington. Okay. So that w- no, does that w- doesn't count against him then, right? Well, correct, correct. Well, so, maybe, so, maybe, so, maybe it does. Uh, well, I'm put words maybe, in your mouth. Well, maybe the coach might you know put a little note on the bottom of the page. You know, <laughs> might make him run a few laps after after that. Run <laughs> laps, you man. I'm glad you're not coaching me. Oh, that that's what we had to do. You're it, it, tough. We 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 used to do pop ups for each yard of penalties we had. All of us. <laughs> Our coach was pretty rough, man. Oh, you're talking about the defense. Oh, okay. I, thought, well, I know what we were talking I, about. I, the, whole team, the whole team would have to do pop-ups for each yard of, of penalties that we would have. So if we had, like, 50 yards in penalties, all of us would have to do 50 pop-ups. All right. 15-yard penalty against Farmington. Let's see what Todd Van Vaughn has in store for them this week for that then. There's a snap back to Griggs. He's in the gun. Goes deep to Hicks again. Hicks is wide open this time. Grabs it at the 20 to the 10. Touchdown. Poplar Bluff is on the board. A 46-yard strike. And Griggs to Hicks. Once again, this time, it results in six. Yes, and, and, and we've, we've been waiting for that kind of all night from Popper Bluff. We've seen them make the big play, and we've seen all night long um, uh, the, uh, Griggs trying to go for Hicks, trying to go for Hicks deep, just missing him a little bit, but this time Hicks had at least a few steps on, his, on the cornerback, and he was able to uh, catch the wide-open pass, and it was just a smooth sailing from there. Well, it was. He sailed down the field, as you said. Matt Riggins. On for the extra point. Poplar Buff making this a ball game in Farmington tonight. The snap is back. The hold is down. The kick is up and through. 8-10 remaining in the third. 17-7. And Poplar Bluff trying to make it a ball game in Farmington. We'll have your kickoff in a minute right here on KREI and KLID. This is in Ford Lincoln model year and closeout. Right now you can get 2011 Ford Fiestas, Focus, Fusion, Mustang, and Taurus at 2011 closeout prices. Plus, Sam Sism has SUVs and crossovers, too, like Ford Escape, Explorer, and Edge. When you think Ford, think Sam Sism Ford Lincoln, the trusted name for Ford and Lincoln for nearly 75 years. That's Sam Sism Ford Lincoln off Highway 67 between Park Hills and Farmington. The saying, no pain, no gain, should not be a part of your dental experience. At St. Francis Plaza Dental, they believe your gain should be no pain. The days of your dental visit, starting with a big uncomfortable needle, are over. Their clinic uses advanced technology, laser anesthesia, instead of the traditional needle, significantly reducing your discomfort and virtually eliminating recovery time. The result, a more pleasant overall dental experience. Learn more at yourgentledentist.com. I'm Dr. Mike, your gentle dentist. I'm gentle with people and gentle with prices. The Poplar Bluff Mules remembering the 70-7 defeat from last year. They are putting up a fight tonight in Farmington. A kickoff from Poplar Bluff taken by Connor Duvall. Connor Duvall breaks one tackle. He's got one man out in front now. He's at midfield with a 45-40. Cuts back to the 30 and now rolls down at the 20-yard line. My goodness. What a run back. A gain of 74 yards by Connor DeVault. And when Farmington needed a play, Connor DeVault supplies one. Yes, a big play right there. And you can just tell, once the ball grabbed that, uh, the ball grabbed the ball, you can see him, you know, the engines firing up. He was just gone once he had it. You know, he, he found the open hole off to the left. He caught it to the near side, ran to the far side, and he just kept going and going and going. And it looked like he had a chance to take it all the way, were, were, were not for that one man back. Four to the right side, one man off to the left side. And that 
to Warren. Busenbark's back in the gun. First and ten, Farmington. They've got it at the 20-yard line of Poplar Bluff. They complete it to Evan Donovan, and Evan Donovan is drilled and taken down Kimbrell Miller. And here's a flag on the play, and it came right in the area where a wide receiver was making a block. Tom, an impressive touchdown drive. Hicks finally gets to Farmington in terms of going the distance, but this guy's been terrific all night. Four catches, 40, 146 yards for him. This penalty going against Farmington, but tell us about that touchdown drive by the Mules. Yeah, just, just quick and simple. Two plays, 62 yards, started at their own 38th, and they end up getting the uh, first pass attempt to Hicks was uh, ruled a uh, pass interference, so they got some free yards there, and then the 46-yard touchdown pass from Andy Griggs, or not Andy Griggs, um, you like your country music, don't you? Yes, I do. Michael Griggs. Yes, Michael Griggs to Hicks. And uh, that's uh, Griggs' first touchdown of the game. Hicks' first touchdown of the game. And the first touchdown for Popper Bluff this time around. But that big return by the vault kind of makes you forget about that pretty quick. Ten-yard holding penalty goes against Farmington right there. Sets him back ten yards. So first and 20 in the line of scrimmage now at the Popper Bluff 30-yard line. Busenbart steps back. Now pulls it down. Wants to run. And another flag in the area of a hold. We'll see what it is, but Farmington shooting themselves in a the foot, as the official indicates, a hold uh, against the Knights. It'll bring up a first and probably 28, 27, 28, 29 yards here. Yeah, depending on where they spot the ball here, two straight holding penalties, and that one erases an eight-yard game by Busenbark, and Busenbark just, uh, just again, you know, just doing his thing. He, he, he usually he has very good judgment when it comes to wanting to pass the ball or trying to run the ball, and uh, he's shown that good judgment tonight. Unfortunately, though, shooting yourself foot in the penalties and... Uh, and uh, I don't know if uh, Coach Vaughn likes the uh, whole pop-ups for penalties uh, routine like my coach did back in segment, but uh, uh, if you're Farmington, you better hope not. So first and 28, and Busenbark runs the keeper again. He goes over that right tackle, and then he shoved out of bounds. It's a gain of six for Chase. Well, he was he was shoved out of bounds, but not before that he gave the other guy a bit of a stiff arm himself. Uh, Busenbark, a pretty tough quarterback, and he's, he's not one of those quarterbacks you see like in the NFL where, where they'll scramble and then they'll slide. He'll take his shots. I just think that it's about time for a throw up there to Doug Warren. It seems like a good a good, good area of the field to do that. So Busenbarks takes a look at this second and 24. Instead, he goes to Dunavant, and Dunavant is hit just as soon as he got the football. This defense, they, gives you, they give uh, some guys some cushion, other guys not so much. They've done some nice scouting. Kimbrell Miller, a gain of just a couple for Donovan. Yeah, they have, and one of those uh, rare catches by Donovan that did not go for a touchdown. So <laughs> yeah. maybe maybe Busenbark had that in the back of his mind, maybe. Get it in Donovan's hands, things happen. Looking at a third now and 19 for Farmington. Busenbark is in the gun, looks to his right. And now throws it down the field to Donovan. This one's in the end zone. Evan tried to reach back for it, but terrific coverage by Kimbrell Miller. Yeah, it was. And Miller, that whole time, he did have awareness of where the ball was. And uh, and uh, some, I see, he might have face guarded him a little bit. I didn't see it. It was just good coverage by Miller. And uh, Miller's a name that we've been calling a lot tonight uh, for the Popper Bluff defense. He had the interception earlier on. And he's just been doing a really good job on shutting down whoever he's matched up with. You know, Logan Bradley is capable. Of, I'm not suggesting that he should be out there. No. But he's capable of hitting a 46-yard field goal. Now, he's sick tonight, too. So yes. I, I wonder if he, w if he were truly healthy, if Coach would think about it. Yeah, that has to be a big factor here. Fourth and 19. Busenbar back in the gun. Scrambles now. Heads toward the line of scrimmage. He's got to throw the football. He gains four yards and turns it over on downs. Well, he... It Yes, he did have to throw the ball there, but at the same time, you throw the ball and you throw an interception, and then something something else happens. So Busenbark maybe being a little bit protective, trying to get what he can, and when the Popper Bluff takes the ball over here on first and ten, maybe give them not as good field position as uh, as uh, they could have. So Popper Bluff football at its own 25-yard line. 6.37. We got a little drama building here. 6.37 yeah. remaining in the third, 17-7. And Popper Bluff is the one that just had the big play, the big 40 six-yard touchdown pass, and they've got the football net back now, and forcing Farmington to give it over on downs. Griggs back in the gun. Two wide receivers off to the left, one to the right side. He drops back as he's out of the gun and completes the pass. It's a five-yard strike and a nice-looking pass that time to Darren Young. And a great tackle by Logan Bradley, too, and he timed it just right. You can see him as he was approaching the receiver, trying to time it so he doesn't hit him too early and get past interference. Just as he catches the ball, Bradley's in there for a textbook hit. Great defensive stop by Bradley. Yep. 
If you can eliminate yards after the catch, good news, unless, of course, the catch is 30 yards downfield. Like, like they like to do. Like they have been doing. <laughs> Gr Griggs back in the gun once again. The snap is on the ground, and he, this time he's drilled for a, a four-yard loss. I'm not sure if that w was supposed to be a run or a pass. Quite honestly, it didn't matter. The snap was on the ground. He was never really able to scoop it cleanly, and he's lucky he fell on top of and it. And now he's, he's, he's limping here a little bit. Looks like he was favoring his uh, left leg there. He looks back to the bench. And uh, he's going to try to stay in here, it looks like. But he's, uh, he's a little ginger out there. Yeah, he sure is. Alex Lewis is back up. He's just a sophomore. And Griggs is the senior. And not just a sophomore, a 5'9", 170 sophomore as well. So uh, Griggs coming in at 6'165". Third and seven. And they gave Griggs a very generous spot that time. And Griggs looks to his left. It's an out route. And it's good for a first down to guess who? Brian Hicks. I've been impressed with this guy tonight. <laughs> Brian Hicks has been the man for Popper Bluff tonight, that is for sure. And, and Griggs, Griggs loves throwing at him, and, there, and there's a reason for that. He's been, he's been targeted many, many times tonight, and there's a reason for that. Just that's because Hicks is a good player. And we're also seeing, too, Griggs, you know, the big completions before are starting to go by the wayside. We're seeing them, you know, five, ten-yard passes here and there. Those are the routes he was missing earlier. He's hitting them now. Now he is hitting them, yes. And we haven't seen him, uh, I mean, besides the one pass to Hicks, not going deep too much. Got 100 now and 95 yards passing. Hands it off this time, though. Here's Lorenzo Daly dancing right through the middle of the line and taken down by Brendan Amston after a five-yard game. Daly getting a game. We haven't said his name too much tonight as uh, Popper Bluff liking to vary up their rushing tack a little bit here, but that one going good for five yards. He does lead them in rushing tonight. Seven carries and 35 yards. And the big nose tackle for Farmington, Kyle Van Ness going out, so... Farmington expecting pass here in all likelihood. Jared Sumter moves over to the nose guard spot. Sumter at 170 pounds and a keeper from Griggs. Griggs needed five. Looks like he got about four, four and a half. Yeah, we're going to call it about four and a half here as Griggs on the keeper. And he's he's another one of those quarterbacks that, uh, like Busenbark, likes to run it himself. And and Griggs, he, he had to be helped up by his teammates there. He's, he's, he looks like he's a little shaken up physically. Got to give him a lot of credit for staying out there and playing through this. It's a close game, 17-7 here in the third quarter. And he wants to go out there and win this one for Popper Bluff. But he just, uh, you can tell, he's just, he looks like he's fighting something, maybe with his uh, right leg, maybe. I don't know. He's trying to clear a few cobwebs, well, that's that for too. sure. That too. 350 and counting down in the third quarter. And as Tom told, a 17-7. And Poplar Bluff is back on the march with a third and one. Handed off to Daly. Cuts back. Daly had it. Was hit in the backfield. I think they grabbed his face mask. And then he jolts forward for a first down as well. And flags coming all over the place here. And it looks like that they're going to get someone for holding. Might be defensive. Might be offensive. There was a scrum going on. They're going to say face mask on Farmington. You're right. So... So that's going to give Popper Bluff here a freebie first down. Well, Daly did a little dance in the hole, and, yeah. and there was one man through that looked like he was going to have a shot at the tackle, but as he hit, as he hopped and skipped, the only thing that the Farmington defense could grab onto was a face mask at that point. Yeah, and, and Daly, his, his legs are, are, are still probably fresh because, he, as, as we mentioned, he's, he, he's gotten a few carries tonight, but he's, he's not been the, been the feature guy tonight. We, they've kind of spread it around amongst the rest of the team. Daly with eight tries and 39 yards. The only guy that's carried more than him, Griggs. Griggs has been a 14-carry guy for 14 net yards. Griggs looks to Hicks, out route. Ooh, it sails by Hicks. No, he's got it. He's got, got it. it. He and got it. Hard trip closes down on him after a six-yard gain. And we just talked about Bradley timing his tackle very well, you know, at the point of the catch, and uh, Hard trip making another tackle as well, uh, just like Bradley did. Griggs now over 200 for the night, 201, and Brian Hicks getting close to a 200-yard night. Say close, he's a 161. He's closer than anybody else. Austin Goodrich, another one of those good athletes. He's going to go wide to the right side. Second and a long four, a short five. Take your pick. Twins to the left side. And Poplar Bluff moving the sticks. Daly has it now. Daly totes it through the middle of that nine and taken down by Brendan Amsden one-on-one. -on -one. Gain of two. Nine carries, 41 yards for Daly. A third and a long three. Coming up for Poplar Bluff. Two minutes. 48 seconds remaining in the third frame. We've got a great ball game here. 17-7, yeah, Farmington leads Poplar Bluff. And, far, and Poplar Bluff still hanging in there. This has been the seventh play in the drive coming up here. You know what, the thing is, too, it doesn't, it, it's not, this hasn't been built on turnovers or, or fluky plays. This is Poplar Bluff standing in there and playing 
total toe football with Farmington. Yeah, they have. I mean, I mean, you know, you look at the turnover battle, you look at, you know, just, just execution in general, and Popper Bluff is right there. Greg's under center this time, hands to Daly, and Daly has three guys jump on top. The last one there was the big man, Roper Garrett, the middle linebacker. Amsden hit him early. He was able to just squirt free from him, and when Garrett arrived, that was it, a loss of a yard. Yeah, that was it. He had, a, you know, at least a couple of uh, touches before he finally went down there in the backfield, so Popper Bluff Looks like they're uh, getting a new unit out there. Looks like they're going to punt this one away here. So uh, give Farmington credit. That was looking a little bit of a unsure drive there by Popper Bluff if you're a Farmington fan. The punt team on the field for Popper Bluff now. They've got a fourth and six. And they're going to fake this thing. And wide open is Daly. Daly's at the 30. Daly's at the 20 to the 10. And DeVault hauls him down there. Wow. A gain of 34 yards by Poplar Bluff. Farmington never saw it coming. Well, didn't see, I didn't see that one coming either. It looks like they were just convinced too, that they were going to punt it away. But some flags here on the field. And if this comes back, ouch, if wow. you're Poplar Bluff. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but I saw what happened. I saw the results of it. The, the result of it was Doug Warren getting back up off the ground without his helmet. Now, Poplar Bluff is pointing toward the Farmington side. Who, I want to know who threw that pass. Yeah, I didn't see that either. I was, I was, getting, I was, I was just waiting for the punt to, you know, to, to, come, to come back. I wasn't even focusing on who had the ball. Um, there was Daly that got the reception. Right. And it would be a 34-yard gain on the reception. And there's two flags there on the field, and the refs are discussing something here. And it looks like they're in a pretty deep discussion over whatever happened. Um, I'm not sure if they're discussing whether it was a penalty at all or maybe they're questioning the spot. I didn't see what, what, what could have happened. I was focused more on, on, on the pass itself. Well, it was a couple players getting mixed up in the middle of the field. Yeah. What it was away from the ball. Um, so maybe someone sportsmanlike coming up here maybe? I don't know. Well, well, don't know. Well, ref picks up one flag and the second flag is also picked. Up. We still haven't received word from the well, head ref what's going on. There are two referees in the middle of the field, and there are two emissaries, <laughs> one to each side, talking to the coaches. And here's the signal now, looks like. So they'll go personal foul, Farmington, personal foul, Poplar Bluff, and ejections. Wow. wow. And well, the, you, you said it. There was a bit of a scrum there. And, and it, the it, play stands. And, yeah, so the, 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 the penalties cancel each other out. The result stands. And, and you saw it out there in the middle of the field. You know, they were having a bit of a scrum. And some boost coming out here uh, over the ejections. And uh, mainly from this side of the field, it would seem. So Lorenzo Daly catches the fake punt for a reception for 34 yards. And Poplar Bluff is in business here. They've got it at the Farmington 10-yard line, 133 remaining in the third. They have pitched a second half shutout so far against this Farmington offense, and they've scored the only touchdown in the second half and are now deep in Farmington territory once again. Here's the quarterback, Michael Griggs. Griggs looks deep in the end zone for Austin Goodrich, throws it toward the pylon. Almost a nice catch. It was a nice effort by Austin Goodrich. And really, not a bad place to put the ball by Michael Griggs. No, that's where you want it, right there in that back corner. If you're going to throw a fade, you want to try to aim for that back pylon there, the back right one. Goodrich laying out for that one. And it looks like, you know, from here, he, he had a good chance at hauling that one in. It just ended up uh, going through his hands. But uh, that, was, that was a good-looking play by Popper Bluff. Just didn't work out. So a second and ten just outside of the ten-yard line. The line of scrimmage. Griggs going under center here. His running back, Cornelius Timothy. Two wide receivers to the right side, one to the left, and now they're going to run a reverse, and the reverse pops in and out of the hands of Poplar Bluff. They reversed it to Kimbrell Miller, and the reverse was put right in his bread basket, and it's but then he fumbled it, popped it up in the air, and in trying to chase it down, the Knights come up with it. And the third time, Tom, my goodness, that Poplar Bluff has been at the 10-yard line of Farmington and has been turned away for no points. Yeah, that, that hurts. That hurts, because this game could be a lot closer were it not for, you know, the turnover on downs and this right here. Plays like this right here. Looks like from this point that Popper Bluff might have pounced on that ball, but of course 
and the belt, and you know, underneath all that scrum, a lot of hands going around. You don't know how many times that ball changes hands. That is a massive, massive play in this game. I thought the fake punt was a massive play, but now here's uh, a play that turns it right around again, and Farmington has it. Timeout, Knights. 1.15 remaining in the third. 17-7 our score, and Farmington's got the ball back at its own 25-yard line. We'll tell you more in a minute right here on KREI Farmington and KLID Poplar Bluff. Hi, this is Jeff at Cartridge World. Customers continue to ask which cartridges we fill. Well, that's easy. Almost every ink and toner cartridge on the market today. And a lot of people ask where we're located. Well, that's easy, too. Right next to Fitness Fuel on the back side of the Maple Valley Shopping Center in Farmington. And finally, many ask, will I save money? The easiest question yet. Of course you will. We're Cartridge World in Farmington. We make it easy for you to save money at Cartridge World. When it's time to paint, it's time to visit County Do-It Center. Whatever your painting project requires, they have it all. Their friendly staff can mix custom colors to complement any decorating scheme and offer helpful, knowledgeable advice. The Do-It Best Quality Paint line is one of the fastest-growing private brands in the industry. At County Do-It Center, they have more than paint, lumber, and hardware. They have solutions. County Do-It Center, they have two great locations to serve you in Bloomsdale and St. Genevieve. Anthony Greco gets his first carry of the game for Farmington. It's a three-round tote around the right side. Tom just received word that it was the quarterback that was the up man on that fake punt. So it was Griggs that completed that 34-yard pass on that fake punt. But then the turnover by Poplar Bluff. Chase Busenbark rolling to the left side. He chucks that out of bounds while he has time. Goes back to the line of scrimmage, but he ate it three yards deep, and then it brings up a third and nine. Yeah, I'm not sure if Gusenberg maybe thought that he could have turned a corner there and took it upfield, but uh, obviously if you're Coach Todd Vaughn, you want to try to teach your quarterbacks at that point to get rid of the ball and, 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 and not take the yards. And, you know, but, of course, on, on one benefit is that you do take some time off the clock because you have 18 seconds left here in the third quarter. Farmington will not have to snap the ball again in the third, and they'll walk over to their sideline. So we go to the fourth with, it, with this thing in doubt. Farmington 17, Poplar Bluff 7. We go to your fourth quarter after this one-minute timeout. Hi, this is Jeff and Paige from Auto Spa Car Washes. When you wash your car, truck, boat, motorcycle, four-wheeler, or whatever wheeler at Auto Spa, you're using our exclusive cotton soft water system. This system will clean your whatever wheeler, leaving it spot-free with a finish that looks great today and for years to come. Wash your car at Auto Spa, home of the free air freshener. To find an Auto Spa near you, go to myautospa.net. Wash your car. Wash your car. Wash, wash your, your car, car at Auto, Auto Spa. spa. When it comes to collision repair on your vehicle, call Brad Wheaton and the team at Crown Collision Center. For nine straight years, Crown Collision Center has been ranked third in the nation in customer satisfaction at 98%. Recognized by Motor Trend Magazine, they perform all collision repairs on any make and model, foreign or domestic. All done by factory trained certified technicians and their five-star rated. State-of-the-art facility and all work carries a written lifetime warranty. Call Brad Wooten for your collision repair at Crown Collision Center, 800-996-2566. Well, Poplar Bluff has made a surge in this third quarter of play. They scored the only touchdown in the second half, and right now Tom Poplar Bluff has more total yards in this game than Farmington. 313 to Farmington's. 250, Farmington with one yard net in the third quarter. But the key uh, stat for uh, Popper Bluff this game, turnovers. Two of them in critical points. One to fumble, one to interception early on. Good call. Chase Busenbar back in the gun. He's back in the pocket, throws it over the top to Connor DeVault. Grabs it at the 45, and he's just dragged down at the 25-yard line. A 50-yard gain and a great catch and run by Connor DeVault. So from the 25 to the 25 for Farmington, as uh, Busenbark now uh, showing off the deep, deep, deep arm for Farmington. 50-yard uh, catch to Connor DeVault, and now Farmington in a position where if they get some points here on this drive, they can breathe a little bit easier. What a multi-skilled athlete. Connor DeVault runs tough, runs fast, and a great wide receiver when you need him there as well. So Brusenbach back in the gun line of scrimmage is the Poplar Bluff 25-yard line. Greco gets the carry. Greco slides to the, five, to the 15, to the 10, breaks two more tackles, and he's down to the 7-yard line. Tough run by Anthony Greco in a gain of 18 yards. Tough run and a great run by Anthony uh, Greco, as you mentioned. Greco uh, uh, coming in off the bench uh, for Connor DeVault. We haven't called his name too much tonight, but he's got some action here late.
later on, and uh, he's making the most of it. I mean, Greco, he's just a junior, so uh, he's making it, making a case for next year. He bet he is. 11.36 remaining in the fourth, 17-7 Farmington. Time out on the field. We'll tell you more in a half a minute right here on KREI and KLID. When it comes to collision repair on your vehicle, call Brad Wooten and the team at Crown Collision Center. For nine straight years, Crown Collision Center has been ranked third in the nation in customer satisfaction at 98%. Recognized by Motor Trend Magazine, they perform all collision repairs on any make and model, foreign or domestic. All done by factory trained certified technicians and their five-star rated. State-of-the-art facility and all work carries a written lifetime warranty. Call Brad Wooten for your collision repair at Crown Collision Center. 800-996-2566. Bob Chase Busenbark with some good numbers tonight. One interception, but he does have two touchdown passes and now 185 yards passing. He averages 163 on the year. His numbers were much better than that, but last game was almost like a lost game for Busenbark. He got injured and only threw for 11 yards in the first half against McClure North, so that brings the average way down. But Busenbark looks sharp uh, again tonight and has looked sharper as the game's gone along now. And and for a guy that didn't have a second half last game, uh, Busenbach's having quite a second half this game. Yeah, he is so far in a great 50-yard completion to Connor DeVault as Farmington now works inside of the 10-yard line of Poplar Bluff. Poplar Bluff looked like it maybe was going to go in and make this a three-point game, and now the field has been flipped, and Farmington looks to go up by more than two touchdowns. 11-36 remaining in this fourth quarter. 17-7 to is the score. And a delay a game here on Farmington as the play clock had winded down to zero. And, you know, at this point in the field, that's not the worst thing in the world because you give yourself a little extra room to maneuver if you're a receiver. You're so close to the end zone, you know, the, the secondary gets a little cramped to work in. So now you give yourself an extra five-yard cushion. What a weird call coming after a timeout, though. Yeah, but, you know, as I said, I mean, I, I you know, if they, if they were given the extra five yards, it's not the worst thing in the world. Farmington will. So if I were coaching them, I wouldn't have them do pop-ups over that one. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a direct snap to Connor DeVault. And DeVault to the 10, to the 5, pushing toward the end zone down at the 1 yard line. Yeah, very close there to a touchdown for Connor DeVault. And uh, it's not a true wildcat formation as uh, the quarterback was back there. But uh, DeVault taking the direct snap. And that did have Popper Buff's surprise. And uh, DeVault almost making some uh, more magic happen on offense. But... Now looks like he's going to take the snap again. It is a true Wildcat this time. And the lead blocker right there, Roper Garrett in the backfield, leads Connor DeVault into the end zone, escorts him there, 23-7. Farmington leads now after the one-yard touchdown run by Connor DeVault on the Wildcat formation with the fullback, Roper Garrett. 11-08 remaining in the fourth, Farmington 23, Poplar Bluff 7. And just another... Uh, uh, another feather in the cap of Robert Garrett tonight as uh, he's been a, a maniac on defense. And, of course, now he's, uh, he's helping out on offense as well. So, hey, he can, he can do it all. Logan Bradley looking for the extra point. He's got it. 24-7. Farmington on top. 11-08 remaining in the fourth. Your kickoff in one minute. When it's time to paint, it's time to visit County Do-It Center. Whatever your painting project requires, they have it all. Their friendly staff can mix custom colors to complement any decorating scheme and offer helpful, knowledgeable advice. The Do-It Best Quality Paint line is one of the fastest-growing private brands in the industry. At County Do-It Center, they have more than paint, lumber, and hardware. They have solutions. County Do-It Center, they have two great locations to serve you in Bloomsdale and St. Genevieve. Chat speaker Tom Willenbury here. Kathy Kapai is back at the studio. Appreciate her good work as well. We'll remind you to tune in after the ball game for our end zone ball game over on J98 tonight. Central is at Hillsboro on our affiliate KJF. That's 1400 on your AM dial. Festus is at DeSoto. And providing updates for us tonight is Luke Turnbow, Potosi at Fredericktown. Here's Logan Bradley. Swings that big right leg and sends this one over to the far corner. It's picked up at the two-yard line by Brian Hicks. Hicks has to reverse field, and he fights through a couple of tackles across the 15-yard line. He must have broken three or four tackles and run 40 yards. 
but the return totals about 12. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's one of those returns that, you know, it, those are 12 very hard-fought yards, and he had to run all over the place and break a lot of tackles. I know Robert Garrett was down there as well. We've uh, said his name quite a few times tonight as he seems to be on the ball tonight. But Farmington uh, now with a bit of a cushion here, a 24-7 lead here with... 10.58 left to go here in the fourth quarter, and we're going to see what they can do here on defense. Michael Griggs moving a little bit better. We saw him limping earlier, but he looks like he's moving a little bit better as he trots back out onto the field for this series of downs. Hands of two is running back Lorenzo Daly, and Daly stuffed as he got to the line of scrimmage, maybe gained a yard. Coming off the top of that pile, guess who? Kyle Van Ness. <laughs> And that's a, that's a guy that if you're on the bottom of the pile, you don't want to have on top of you. He's a, he's a big boy, that's for sure. Not, not quite T.J. Williams big, a popper bluff, but he's, he's a pretty big boy himself. I think I said that that was Lorenzo Daly. I, I probably ought to correct myself. I think now it was Cornelius Timothy that ran the ball that time. So we'll go with Timothy for the one-yard game. And Griggs is back to pass. Curl route, overshot his man, Darren Young. Almost looked like Griggs was throwing an out or a, cur or a curl to the outside. And yeah, and Young was running the curl to the inside. Well, there. he probably put a little extra on that uh, pass because uh, Connor DeVault uh, pretty much had his hands all over it. And uh, Griggs had to literally throw it way up over uh, DeVault's sleeping hands just to get it, you know, from prevent it from being knocked down as we hear the very enthusiastic Farming Tonight band here making some noise. So DeVault coming on that stud blitz from the left side there from yes. that position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Greg had to contend with that and uh, ended up overshooting his guy, which he's done quite a bit tonight. So third and nine. And Michael Griggs works from the gun, looks to his right side, locks in, but now goes underneath to Daly. That's a nice uh, little Fumble. outlet route, but Daly fumbles the football. Connor DeVault dives on top, and he's got friends there to help him. Farmington football on another turnover by the Poplar Bluff Mules. The man that ended up coming up with it was Brendan Amsden. It'll be a gain of four on the route to Daly, but then Daly, it really wasn't popped that hard that time, Paul. Just kind of got nudged and didn't have the ball secure, and out it came. Yeah, I kind of held that ball like a loaf of bread, and that's actually the second fumble lost by Daly tonight, so uh, not a good stat if you uh, are a Poplar Bluff fan, but then again, Farmington now has the ball deep in Popper Bluff territory with a commanding lead. Bunch formation over to the right side. Busenbark tucks in and runs. 15 now. Breaks to the outside to the right. Hash marks down to the 12. And a gain of six yards by Chase Busenbark. Farmington could almost close the door on this thing. There's a lot of time left, Tom, but uh, a 31-7 margin will be very tough for Poplar Bluff to overcome. Yeah, a touchdown pretty much puts a nail in the coffin right here, and this is as deep as Farmington has started all game um, in uh, Poplar Bluff territory. And now here's a pass, a little curl to the right side, incomplete, intended out there for Alex Sebastian. Yeah, the, uh, the idea was there, and Sebastian was wide open, but a defender came in and knocked the pass down, almost like the vault did in the previous possession for uh, Popper Bluff. But still Farmington in deep territory, third down. So Busenbark looks for a bunch formation to the left side. He wants to run the keeper again. He's got it to the 10. And nudges it down inside of the five-yard line to the four. A gain of ten for Busenbark. And a first and goal now for the four. Busenbark, he can do it in the air and he can do it on the ground. We've, we've said it all night. And he continues here in the fourth quarter to be very impressive with the ball as he gets some... Uh, actually, he's going to take a little bit of a breather here. So he's going like. to trot over to the sideline. And once again, we see Connor DeVault. And also in the backfield, we see Roper Garrett. This has been kind of a fun formation. Yeah, it has been. We'll see. Uh, in addition to see what DeVault can do, it's going to be interesting to see what Garrett does here. Well, Roper, Roper Garrett was the team's leading rusher last year. He had, th he had 444 yards, but now he wears number 60, and he serves as a lineman. And he's going to lead block this time for DeVault once again. And DeVault noses it into the end zone. Touchdown, Farmington. A four-yard touchdown run by Connor DeVault. And it's that Wildcat once again with Roper Garrett leading the way. 9.04 remaining in this fourth quarter. 30-7. to Farmington leads Poplar Bluff. Four play, 19-yard drive there for the Farmington Knights. Uh, going for the touchdown. Four-yard touchdown run by Connor DeVault. DeVault's second score here on the night tonight, so we saw the two touchdown passes by Busenbark earlier. The vault now getting it done on the ground. Pretty big fumble by Poplar Bluff right there. That may have removed any shot that they might have at this game. Extra point is up and through. 9-0-4, remaining in the fourth. 31-7. Farmington leads Poplar Bluff. Your kickoff in a minute. 
in Farmington is proud to be a part of the community and is committed to being a good corporate citizen and partner in the Farmington community. Accent Marketing in Farmington wish all the area athletes a great season and encourages people everywhere to attend and support area sporting and community events. Accent Marketing believes in supporting and encouraging our area youth and believes in community in which we live. This message brought to you by your friends at Accent Marketing in Farmington. If you're looking for those hard-to-find craft items, then look no further than Red Rooster Crafts and Supplies in Farmington. They offer what the big chain stores don't. In fact, if you don't find what you're looking for, Tracy will be glad to order it. Plus, Red Rooster Crafts offers custom picture framing and lots of new home decor, including nautical, western, Americana, and rooster-themed items. Check out the new line of cookie cutters and home decor outdoor flags. That's Red Rooster Crafts behind the post office in Farmington. Well, the turnover turns into points for Farmington Tom, and after really fighting hard to get back into this game, Papa Bluff has made some errors, and Farmington has taken advantage. Yeah, Papa Bluff staying in this game throughout, up until the beginning of the fourth quarter, when Farmington got uh, two touchdowns here based on turnovers by Popper Bluff. Brian Hicks has it all the way back at his one-yard line, and a block in the back on the return as Hicks brings it out to the 20, and they'll scoot this thing back to the 10. That third quarter was a terrific quarter for Poplar Bluff. They outgained Farmington 115 to 1 in yep. the third quarter and outscored them 7 nothing. Yep, but the story here is is turnovers and blown opportunities. You know, they got the ball down to the Farmington 22 the first drive. Bailey uh, Daly fumbled it. Farmington takes over and there's there's just more from there. Turnover on down to the Farmington 5. Uh, another turnover on downs on the Farmington 31. Uh, at the Farmington 10, it's just, it's just so many opportunities that Popper Bluff has had to, to, to make their mark on this game that they, they, they leave at the doorstep. A little bit Farmington, like what... Farmington now starting to take advantage. A little bit like what Todd Vaughn told us in the pregame show. He said they, they have pretty good players and yeah. they do some nice things. He said, but, but they still make a few errors that cost them and that's exactly what's happened. Exactly, and it's all up to uh, Farmington to take advantage of those errors and they're really starting to now. 31-7, Farmington leads here. Griggs hands it off and the blitz came that time from Roper Garrett, and no chance for the running back there, but a flag on the play. And uh, and from here, it looked like the running back slipped on the play, but th then again, it could have been you just saw Roper Garrett coming and might have gotten a little scared because Garrett has been all over the place tonight. I mean, or a third option, a face mask. Well, that works <laughs> too, you know. <laughs> that works too. And that's what they'll call. And, of course, that's big because that's going to give uh, an automatic first down for Popper Bluff. It looks like they did give him the 15 yard variety. Just a five. Okay, they, it, it's just a five, but it's still first down. That's the eighth penalty for Farmington in this game. Probably not quite as clean as Coach Bond would like to see out of his club. And that might have been a big reason why the game was as close as it was for a while. Griggs under pressure, throws this one up for Goodrich, but that was a prayer, and it's picked off by Kyle Hartrip, and Goodrich brings him down. At the 35-yard line. Hartrip did a nice job running with Goodrich step for step. And something that quarterbacks don't always do, he looked back for the ball the whole time and knew exactly where it was, made a play, made a break on it, grabbed a hold, and now Goodrich down on the sideline. Yeah. I don't want to see that. Yeah, I definitely don't want to see that at all. Goodrich has uh, been a big athlete this game. And uh, Popper Buff dealing with a couple injuries of their own as well. A couple of their regulars uh, are out this game. Uh, one of them... Uh, we'll mention uh, their starting safety, Nick Patillo, had a broken collarbone, so Austin Goodrich is starting in his spot. And the linebacker, uh, T.J. Boner, had a, uh, uh, tore his MCL, so they're having, have, they're having to have a reserve in there, too. And now you got another one of their starters now that is hurt. So if you're looking at, you know, from the Popper Bluff point of view, you're a, re you're, you're, you're a rebuilding program, you're, getting, you're trying to get back up to prominence, but yet the guys that have gotten you up here up to this point are starting to get hurt. Now, here's the good news. That was, that was the bad news. The good news is that Goodrich is back up, and it looked like it was a cramp. So a okay. cramp or a charley horse looks well, like one of the two, and they worked that out, and now he's back up, so that's good to see. And that's the thing with cramps. You know, they, they look like they're in so much agony for a while. But and they are. are. They yeah, are. They, well, believe me, I, I've, I've had my share, and, it's, and, and they're not fun, but you, you, you can walk away from them. You bet. So Farmington's offense quickly now back out on the field. And Chase Busenbart will direct it. A diamond formation by four wide receivers off to the right side. And on the left... It's Alex Sebastian. Seven, basically seven 
coverage people and four rushers for Poplar Bluff. So there's a pretty good chance that uh, Busenbach's going to have a lot of time to pass, I guess. Is that what you're trying to Well, and, to? and you know what they have done, too, Tom, when they've seen that, is Busenbach has run those keepers. Yeah, because you, you, you get all the secondary back on their heels, and Busenbach's just going to take advantage. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what it does here. First and ten for Farmington. They've got up that Poplar Buff 34-yard line. Busenbach back to pass. Fires it over the middle. Pass complete. And it's right in the hands of Logan Bradley. Bradley takes it the rest of the way to the end zone. A 34-yard touchdown pass. Busenbark to Bradley, the B&B &B connection. The first touchdown catch of the season for Logan Bradley. Yeah, that's the third touchdown pass of the game for Busenbark here, and it comes on a big 35-yard completion. First play of the drive deep in Poplar Bluff territory, and Farmington now is taking advantage, and now they have their foot on the throat of Popper Bluff. Nice completion there, and that was... Really a, a nice work in terms of X's and O's because that was one of those design plays where you have that bunch to the right side, everyone's a, one, one's a different route, and that skinny post right over the middle of Logan Bradley was wide open, and he took it the rest of the way. 38-7 the score. Bradley had no one around him at all, period, and really up until the point that, that he started crossing the goal line, he was wide open. Uh, so, so give credit to Bradley. And, and one thing that, uh, that Coach Vaughn said uh, as the uh, extra point is uh, good, um, one thing that Coach Vaughn said is is that Bradley might not play a whole lot tonight, but you know what? It's here in the fourth quarter. He's still out there, still producing. So, so Logan Bradley, uh, uh, if we had a hard hat award to give, we might give it to him tonight. Yeah, so he's played, and he's played well. And I think the first time that maybe you commented on him was on defense. Made a yeah. nice play defensively. Yeah, so he's contributed in every area. Very nice pass breakup. Hit the field goal early on, and uh, he's now contributing on offense. So, so, so what, what more can he ask for? Too many. How many turnovers is that for Poplar Bluff? I'm, I'm struggling to lose track. Well, they they there there's four turnovers here. They had uh, two fumbles, two interceptions, and they also had three times where they turned the ball over on downs in Farmington territory. Mm -hmm. Seven times that Poplar Bluff could have had points that they ended up coughing away or losing on downs. Mm -hmm. That that and that that hurts. Logan Bradley to boot it away. He'll kick it from our right to our left. He approaches, he strikes, and he sends this one sky high. And <laughs> that one is taken by Hicks with his heel just in front of the goal line as he rushes it out to the 20-yard line. So he, so he does, you know, get back out to the 20. So if he put his heel in the end zone, you know, it would have been the same thing. Ball just inside of the 20. 8-19 remaining in this fourth quarter, 38-7. to seven. And any way you cut this thing, whatever the final score ends up being from this point out, it's a popular bluff team that showed up here in yes. much uh, more impressive fashion than they showed up for the game last year. Well, I'm sure as we'll go over in our final game stats here at the end of the game, Popper Bluff stats will match up fairly well with Farmington, except for the turnovers. And that, and that's the key right there, winning that turnover battle. And uh, Popper Bluff definitely lost it tonight. Otherwise, this game would be a lot closer. Michael Griggs back in the gun. He fumbles that snap and then hops on top. It'll be a loss of four. And that's, that's, that's uh, not the first time we've seen uh, that happen tonight on a bad snap. Uh, Greg's having to do that before uh, in the third quarter, trying to and he was able to make something out of it, not very much. And that's just, you know, that's just, that's just again, you know, the, the sloppy pay, play just hurting Popper Bluff more than it's helping Farmington. New wide receiver in the game for Popper Bluff. There's Taylor Coleman checking in and back out. Trent Udaley, 745 and counting down on the fourth, 38 to 7. Farmington leading Poplar Bluff. Michael Griggs, the quarterback, he hands it off this time. Here's a nice run by Cornelius. Timothy bounces it to the outside. He's drugged down at the 20-yard line by Kyle Hartrip, but a pretty decent six-yard game. Yeah, that was, and, uh, and Timothy is still in there. He's been uh, one of the future guys for Poplar Bluff tonight, and uh, good to see him uh, getting, some, uh, getting some yards here late in the game to make it third down and eight. Poplar Bluff continues to shuttle in some new folks. Michael Vandiver. Checking in, 5'7", 140-pound junior at wide receiver. So Vandiver going to split wide to the right side. Off to the left is Coleman, who we told you came in just a few minutes ago. A keeper this time. Ouch. <laughs> that was Griggs, and Griggs has got to be saying at this point, I 
we've seen enough of these guys. Van Ness and Hennis pounding him down to the ground. Yeah, you better make a make an open pass to the ice bath for Griggs after this game because he has <laughs> taken some shots tonight, and we've seen him coming up a little gingerly at times. Looks to be okay for now, but I mean, he's he's just got to he's going to be hurt tomorrow. I mean, hopefully, hopefully he does he doesn't have a day job or something that he does or uh, after school job he has to go to tomorrow because he's going to need the rest. So on to punt it, Sean Sisney. And back to receive is Connor DeVault. Snap was good, and the punt is away, but it's short, and it's spinning over near the Popper Buff sideline. And he twists this thing out of bounds as the official will walk it back inside of the 40-yard line and at the 38. And Busenbark back out on the field. Looks like the starting unit for Farmington was 6-21 remaining in this fourth quarter. And for a moment, Jacob Roney was headed out there. Now he's back to the sideline, and now he's back out on the field. So Jacob Roney getting a shot at wide receiver. Anthony Greco running the running back spot. Connor DeVault does stay in there as a flanker off to the left side. So twins to each side for Farmington. And Busenbarg back in the gun. Now looks over to the sideline. 38-7, Farmington on top. We're at the 6-21 mark of the fourth quarter. Farmington will improve now to 5-1 and one on the season. Poplar Bluff will fall to 1-5. Five. Greco has it over the left tackle now, and Greco spun down. Jumping on his back was Daly, and Daly spun him down after a three-yard gain. Very nice tackle there by Daly as uh, Greco slams his back into the ground pretty hard there. And uh, Hopper Bluff still, uh, there's, there's still, uh, still a game to be played here with uh, six minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter. And now we're going to see the point of the game where the second stringer is going to get their chance to shine. Uh, maybe not for this season, but maybe to give the coach something to remember about for next season. Mark hands it up to Greco oh. again, and Greco is nailed in the hole, and I mean nailed and driven straight back. What a shot right there. Jacob Sliger and Cody Fromm. Woo! Sliger and Fromm out there, they just absolutely drove him to the ground. And, and, if, and, if, and if you're Connor DeVault here, and Connor looks like he's uh, going to be uh, going out there as a flanker now, you got to be wondering, man, get me out of here. Well, that was Greco. Oh, that was Greco. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Good drilled. Catch. Third and seven. Greco standing behind Busenbart. Third and seven. And Chase looks down the left sideline. Nobody there. Breaks the pocket. Rolls to the right. Pitches it toward the end zone. And this is a pass. Nearest man was Jacob Roney, but really had no chance at it. And that's an incompletion for Busenbark. And let's and let's give um, also Greco a lot of credit there because uh, Busenbark had a guy bearing down on his backside, and Greco did a really good job matching up against the guy that's much bigger than him. Unfortunately, his number is 99, and we don't have a 99 on our roster. Well, they, they do. They had, they had a change, and that's Quentin Michael. He's Thank six you. three, two thirty. So you're right. He is much larger than Greco listed at five and, nine and, and one Greco sixty-seven. Stood right up to him. And by the way, we should mention Quentin Michael is not the Rams' safety playing for Popper Bluff tonight. They're two different people. <laughs> so let's, 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 let's just make sure we're clear on that. Important note. And now here's a quick kick on a fourth down as Busenbark punted it away from his quarterback spot. Good punt. And did a nice job. Yeah, it wasn't the prettiest thing. But this thing continues to roll all the way down to the six-yard line. And now a very late flag as things are getting a little chippy out there. Yeah, tempers are and now right another here. late flag. Yeah, some things are being said that we can't hear and can't pick up on our mics, which might be a good thing. Um, as uh, the rest are now talking it over here. We already had one instance tonight on that fake punt by Popper Bluff where there were uh, dueling personal fouls and ejections. So uh, we'll see if uh, what, what happens here. Looks like might be some more personal fouls coming. Hope we don't want to see any ejections, but uh, we'll see what the refs determine here. Is we have 4.57 left to go here in the fourth. Farmington up 38-7. to seven. White Hat says personal foul going against Poplar Bluff. And another ejection. Now, he made some interesting gesticulations right there. He, <laughs> he pointed at first toward Poplar Bluff, then he pointed toward Farmington, then he pointed back toward Poplar Bluff, then he, he gave the ejection signal. So I'm not positive how this is all going to hash out, but it, it appears that we have a, our second ejection of the game. Well, and it appears that we do have personal fouls on the play as well. And the player that was ejected for Popper Bluff, Lake Lauder at the defensive end, uh, uh, he, uh, in, a, in a display of anger, tossed his helmet here on the sideline, and uh, one of the coaches told him to pick it up right away. But he is... He's not a happy camper, and, and he has and he has some reasons to be frustrated. I mean, I, I mean, on the Popper Bluff side, they had their chances tonight, and it's and it's, and it's frustrating when you're on the side of Popper Bluff to uh, to have so much progress on offense tonight and just 
Little things just, 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 just keep snake biting you. And it appears that it will not be an offsetting foul. And in fact, this will back Poplar up. Bob Bluff inside of their own 10, back to the seven yard line. And, and I think I had, I think you had, what was the word you used, gesticulations pretty uh, pretty much well down because it looked like there was two on Popper Bluff and one on Farmington. So net one for uh, Popper Bluff and that gives Farmington a uh, very cushy field position down at the Popper Bluff four. So Farmington will have the football. Oh, I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. Popper Bluff will have the football oh, that's right. Bluff after, the, Sorry. after the quick kick by Busenbark. And they are scooted back in the shadow of their own end zone. Here comes Jared Sumter into the ball game for Farmington. Sumter going to play some defensive end here. He's a starter, but wasn't out there initially. Now runs back out. And it's the first... And 10 for Poplar Bluff. 4.57 remaining in the fourth quarter. And Poplar Bluff with the football at its own three-yard line. And the uh, head ref talking to uh, head coach Mark Barus for Poplar Bluff. Maybe giving him some advice to just, you know, keep things cool, keep things down. I mean, there is, uh, there is still five minutes left to play here, and you don't want to see tempers flaring out too much here um, in a game like this. I mean, Poplar Bluff, I mean, really... I mean, outside of the turnovers, they really don't have a lot to hang their head about here. I mean, they, 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 did, they did come out here and play very, played very strong, and it's just, you know, it's, it's again, on, on the Popper Bluff side, you know, it has to be disappointing to see what's happened, you know, especially just in this fourth quarter alone. For three quarters, Popper Bluff was right in the mix of this. 17-7. Yes. And, and it just and, and and it had outgained Farmington after three. But it's just kind of gotten away from them here in the fourth quarter. Now we're just seeing the, the frustration kind of building, you know, on the Popper Bluff side, and... You know, it's 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 it's, un, it's unfortunate to see because Popper Bluff is a program, you know, that that they are showing signs of coming back, and you don't want to see these kind of mental lapses drag them down. Finally, the White Hat back out on the field, and here comes Alex Lewis. Alex Lewis is the backup quarterback for this team. Yeah, Farmington's made uh, Michael Griggs tonight uh, pretty much. Uh, a tough one, let's call it. I won't call it living hell, but it was pretty well, much, uh, it was tough. Briggs did throw for 239. Well, he did, but he, he also took a lot of hits. Took he, a lot of hits, he took did. Took a lot of hits, and I guess, and I guess the, the, the pain and suffering is over for Griggs. Alex Lewis comes down under center, and he's just going to nudge behind his big lineman right here and just see if he can push this thing out away from the goal line a little bit. Yeah, trying to avoid that safety. and He's tackled right where he started, and so no gain on the play. Of course, Farmington, we were, one of the stories that we were talking about coming into this game was coming off the uh, big loss last week to McClure North, getting a, a bit of a rude awakening from a Class 6 power program and kind of wondering how they come back and respond tonight. And, uh, and, it, and Popper Bluff played them tough for a long time, but we saw here in the fourth quarter that you play, you know, the whole 48 minutes, mm-hmm. and, and that's what Farmington has done so far. Cornelius Timothy in the backfield. They're going to keep it right in the hands of their quarterback, Lewis, this time. And he's going to try to nudge out from the end zone one more time. Already three safeties on the year, by the way, by the Farmington defense. And once again, stuffed at the line. No gain. And brings up a third and ten. So the ball's still, still here on the two-yard line. So they're probably going to try to push this out a little bit more and give their punters some room to punt here. 350 and counting down in the fourth quarter. Hicks checks back in. Boy, has he been a bright spot. Brian Hicks tonight. Yeah, he has. He, not only a great return guy for them, but six catches, 161 yards for him, and a touchdown. Hicks has been the big play guy tonight for sure, and he's uh, and he has nothing to hang his head about either. Hey, Alex Lewis, that's a heck of a game. Good yeah. work by Alex Lewis as he rushes it out to the nine-yard line. He ran that QB keeper and really almost a zone read from the end zone that time, and Gained six yards. Good work by Lewis, a sophomore. And a tackle made by Kyle Warren, who's been in this game from the start, and uh, he doesn't want to get out of this game. I mean, there's still a lot. Of, there's still football to be played. Well, we're gonna have to pick our mega sports player of the game. I know that you've been keen tonight on Roper Garrett. I think that's a pretty good selection as well. We'll, well make that, that, make that determination in over the next three minutes. Connor Devault to receive the punt. 
And Sean Sisney is going to put it out of his own end zone. Does so. Gets a good top spin punt. Duvall closes in on it. Grabs it at the 42-yard line of Poplar Bluff. Heads toward the far sideline. He's got a wall set up over there to the 30. Cuts back to the 25-20. Picks up another block to the 20. To the 15. One guy to beat. What a 10, one five. Touchdown. Connor wow. Duvall. DeVault goes 42 yards for the punt return touchdown for Farmington. And with 2.34 remaining in the fourth, the Cherries on top of this Sunday tonight, 44-7. The Knights on, on top here. What a run back by DeVault. And, and that's just, uh, we, we, we said it in, all in the first half, vision, vision, vision. And, and DeVault, he took that punt and he was backtracking. He caught it to the 42, ended up at about midfield crossed over to the far side and, and of course he got a lot of help from his uh, special teams blocking but the vault, a lot of that was all him right there, just trying to find any lane he could to run through, he did just that and the vault, what a game for him tonight as well, that is his third touchdown on the night tonight, one catching two receiving, or oh, actually yeah, one receiving, two rushing I should say and there's another name you can throw in there for a uh, player of the game consideration he might have two on the ground by the way and then one punt return for the touchdown, yes, 234 you remaining in the fourth, 45-7 the score. And uh, Farmington leads Poplar Bluff. We've got your kickoff in 30 seconds. Hi, this is Jeff and Paige from Auto Spa Car Washes. When you wash your car, truck, boat, motorcycle, four-wheeler, or whatever wheeler at Auto Spa, you're using our exclusive cotton soft water system. This system will clean your whatever wheeler, leaving it spot-free with a finish that looks great today and for years to come. Wash your car at Auto Spa, home of the free air freshener. To find an Auto Spa near you, go to myautospa.net. Wash your car. Wash your car. Wash, Wash your, your car, car at, at Auto Spa. Auto Spa. Logan Bradley on for the kickoff. A breathtaking punt return by Connor DeVault. 42 yards. And now here's Bradley putting his right foot into this one. Brian Hicks, the deep man, catches it at his own one-yard line. Bradley's so good at that. Yes, he is. And Hicks is going to be stopped short of the 20, driven out at the 18-yard line. Well, now, Hicks is a guy that you're talking about that could play, you know, maybe in the college level, uh, maybe some juco ball. And, and you got to learn, you know, in juco to keep your feet in bounds. So he's learning that right now on his, on his uh, kick returns. Backup quarterback Alex Lewis trots back out for this possession. Two minutes and seven seconds. And what it did not look like was going to happen tonight has happened. We've got a running clock over the final two minutes with that 35 point or plus margin differential. Trent Udaly checks in. He's going to run the wide receiver position on the right side. Alex Lewis, backup quarterback on in relief of Michael Griggs. Michael Griggs took his best shot and now it's Lewis's turn. Lewis runs for a couple of yards before being drugged down. And that was big Kyle Van Ness. That put his big paws on him. Yep. And uh, Van Ness still out there late in the game as well. He's, he's, he's a big guy that, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's still in there. He's not on the sideline catching his breath. He's, he's out there playing. And we're under two to play now. We're at the 120 mark. So just a couple of more plays on this one. Farmington will move on to take on Jackson next week. It'll be a home game. And for Poplar Bluff, they will go to Cape Central. And then it's district time after that. Farmington's district at Cape versus Perryville and at Sykeston. Poplar Bluff will go home to play Jackson against Rockwood Summit and at Seckman in their district. And now a flag on the play before it gets started. Under a minute to go. And it's a delay of game whistled against Poplar Bluff. A game against Jackson next week should be a fun one. Jackson uh, coming into uh, tonight's action, uh, one and four. Um, but, but they've had some good programs in the past. Plus, we all know it's Johnny Cash's favorite city. He had, <laughs> had that song with uh, Roseanne Cash. You know you work on a country station when you're talking about Johnny Cash during a football there game. There you go. It's, it's fourth quarter material. Yes. 48 seconds remaining in our ball game. And there's Alex Lewis just trying to work anything he can down the field. Jared Sumter. Drives him down at the line of scrimmage. And also just trying to survive out there, too, as the Farmington defense still still hitting pretty hard. This the, this this game is still not over. You play until the final whistle, and there's uh, we're going to have that final whistle here. Uh, looks like they're going to have to take one more snap here. Maybe not. Looks like they are going to anyway, just to be on the safe side. Third and ten. 
And it's Alex Lewis. He's got two wide receivers off to the left side. Works with the tight end to his right. And Lewis runs that keeper. He's over the left tackle, and it's a first down for Alex Lewis. Way to go. It's a game of 15 yards with four seconds remaining in the ball game. Farmington wins this one, 45 to 7. And they got a little nervous late in the third, but the fourth quarter belonging to the Knights. We've got your post game coming up in a minute, right here on KREI and KLID. When sheet metal contractors, air conditioning and heating, local 36 contractors say they are the indoor air specialists. They mean it. Sheet metal contractors will tailor heating and cooling systems specifically designed for your comfort. They offer many services and products that truly benefit your indoor air quality, such as air duct cleaning, electronic air cleaners, electrostatic filters, humidifiers, and more for commercial, industrial, and residential applications. Call Sheet Metal Contractors in DeSoto at 337-2150, where excellence prevails. Hey, sports fans, this is Bill Best, your American Family Insurance agent. Everyone enjoys watching their favorite team make the big plays. We here at Bill Best Insurance are committed to making the plays for our customers. American Family Insurance has built its reputation on quality service and a broad range of products, such as homeowners, auto, business, health, and life insurance. That's that's why we ensure an enduring commitment to personal service. Join the winning team at Bill Bass Insurance, your American Family Insurance agent. See Bill Bass, your American Family Insurance agent in Park Hills. All right, let's take a look at some of the final numbers for you tonight. So on both sides of the ball, there were some very nice individual performances along the way. 239 yards passing by Michael Griggs tonight. He took quite a bit, quite a few shots, Tom, but we were impressed with his toughness and uh, and some of his plays uh, and his accuracy improved as the game went along. Yeah, it did. I mean, and, and, and it was all, he was accurate on the long passes, not so accurate on the short passes. And then, it, then like in the second half, it almost kind of reversed a little bit. I mean, we saw him completing all the short stuff, long stuff, not so much. And uh, you would have. You know, for all those yards passing that he threw, you would like to see maybe a little bit more as far as points goes, but he did have that one long uh, touchdown pass to Hicks, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about Hicks here in a little bit. The yardage was pretty close, and, and Tom told us that uh, the difference in the game tonight was turnovers. More on that coming up, but 342 yards for Poplar Bluff, 377 for Farmington. Farmington gets 168 on the ground, 219 through the air. Busenbach threw for it all. Three touchdowns in the air by Busenbach, threw one pick. He was 13 for 22. And the leading receiver tonight for Farmington, Alex Sebastian, had 71 yards. He had that 63-yard touchdown catch. Connor DeVault led the Knights in rushing. He had 84 yards on 17 carries. Good rushing night for Busenbark as well. He had 12 carries for 60 yards. The uh, passing game by Michael Griggs, 239 yards, had a nifty 34-yard fake punt for a first down that looked like it was going to set his team up for some points, but then they quickly turned it over. On the ground, the leader was Lorenzo Daly. He had 10 carries for 39 yards. Poplar Bluff gets 103 on the ground, 239 through the air. And 